All right. All right. It looks like we are live, but it says for 21 seconds. Have we been live that long? I hope not because we've been kind of BSing. I don't think so. Um, oh. <laughs> welcome back to another Brehive live stream. Today we are doing our membership live stream where the members of the channel are welcome to join us here live. We have Kimmy, our member moderator, um, Paralegal, I'm so thrown <laughs> off right now. Paralegal and consultant of the channel joining us live today. And if you are a member of the channel, you can also join us live today to talk about a few topics that we have been covering over the last few um, months, I guess. We're in the first quarter of the year, which is crazy. We're almost done with that. Um, and so we're going to go over some of the cases that we have covered in the past. Nothing really new other than kind of some add-ons to things that we have already been covering. So, Kimmy, how are you doing today? I'm good. Happy Saturday. It's exciting to be here again. Yes, yes, I know. It's Saturday live stream, y'all. I was working hard earlier. I was working hard earlier, so I do actually want to start with our um, video, which everyone is not in the live stream. Maybe I shouldn't start with that. Maybe I'll wait like 30 minutes and do a test a, a B test. I created a um, swoop for the like goal. When we do reach our like goal, I created two. They're very similar, but I just don't know which order to put it into. So I'm just going to let the Brie Hive um, vote on that, letting us know which which swoop we should use. And if, if you just don't like it, you're also able to say you just don't like it. And I'll try again. I'll try again because I am not that creative. So again, welcome into the Brie Hive Live. Again, this is a members live stream. I know it always takes a little bit for people to join us live, so that's okay. We'll go ahead and get started by checking out who's in the chat today, this Saturday live stream. So if you are watching live, go ahead and drop in the chat section, letting us know that you are live. If you're watching on the replay, go ahead and drop in the comment section that you are watching live. We are at nine likes with 12 people watching live. So if you have not hit the like button yet, please do. It does help us out in the algorithm, helps us get more friends for the channel, and it really helps us meet, help us meet our like goal. And like I said, I finally did the animation for it. So we're going to test those out today. Um, and then there was something else. Oh, if you are a member of the live stream, I did just, uh, not the live stream, of the channel, I went ahead and dropped the link to join us um, in the chat because I forgot to post it earlier. Um, and Kimmy also posted it in the membership, the membership tab um, so that you can join from there as well if you were looking go on it kind of in the membership um, community tab. So I'm going to go ahead and say hello to everyone. We have Tanya D saying happy Saturday rehive. I look forward to seeing some new faces. Yeah, I hope that some new people join in and chat with us because we I, it's fun chatting in the chat but it's also fun like seeing everyone's reactions live right okay and then tanya d is a member and moderator of the channel randy thompson says lunchtime with brie well who well i'm sorry to hear if you're working but also if you're not working cool i am having a good time spending lunch with you all and hopefully we'll have a good time going over some of the cases that we've been covering this is me just sharing the link that i forgot to share earlier uh, randy thompson says no you haven't been live that long okay yeah i saw on Streamyard it said we were live for like 30 seconds and i was like oh my god um, but then I see over on YouTube studio that we have not been live for that long. So that is good. That's good. Uh, Tanya D says, I'm in listen only mode right now, but I'm here. Well, welcome in. Love to have you here. Tanya D says, oh, look at your poo shirt. Yeah, Kimmy said you like the shirt too. Um, I got it from Ross. Could you believe that? I was like, it was calling my name. It was just like right on the front of one of the racks. I'm like, oh, I'm buying that. I didn't even try it on. I was just like, yep, that is my shirt. Um, there are some stories with Winnie the Pooh in my life. Uh, just me, MD, another member of the channel saying, sending love from East Texas. Can't stay head headed to a banquet. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. No problem. Thank you for stopping by. Another member of the channel. Um, hopefully you can listen in or just catch us on the replay. Randy already hit the like button. And thank you very much. Definitely appreciate that. Tanya D says, can you pin the link to join? I, I did that. Okay. Kimmy already did it. Thank you. Yes, of course. Time Lourdes says, hello, 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 and welcome into the live stream. Nice to have you here today. 
we're not tonight anymore. We're actually streaming during the daytime. <laughs> so, uh, Diane D says, hi, Randy, and just me, MD. Kimmy says, hello, everyone. And she's also on screen with us today. So <laughs> here we are. Okay. So let's see here. What was I going to do? Tell us a poo story. Oh, do you want to hear the Winnie the Pooh story? So I would love to. I don't have I told this story on this channel. I don't think so. So um, I think I was probably about six or seven years old. I, I loved Winnie the Pooh growing up, and I was like six or seven years old. And I have this Winnie the Pooh ship, like boat that you put in the bathtub with you, mm -hmm. and like they had like the different characters that you can put onto the boat. Played with that thing like every day in the bathtub. And then one day I come home and the boat is nowhere to be found. And so I'm looking for this boat. This boat is nowhere. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And eventually my mom was like, oh, yeah, I threw it away. And I was like, why did you throw it away? Like I was actually using it. I think I left it maybe like on the floor or something. And she just threw it away. And I literally brought this up to her like a month ago. I was like, yeah, remember when you <laughs> were Winnie the Pooh boat? She's like, you're still talking about that Winnie the Pooh boat? And I'm like, yes. Like, that was my favorite toy as a child. It broke your little heart. heart. Yeah. Yeah. I remember oh. like the elements of the boat and you could like put the little characters onto the boat and she just threw it away. Didn't discuss it. But yeah, I guess she doesn't like recording things or I left it in the middle of the floor. She doesn't even remember why she got rid of it, but I just am <laughs> so disappointed that she threw this boat away. Oh. <laughs> so that's not Winnie the Pooh story. <laughs> Tragic childhood. That's what I wanted to do, actually. Um, like goal for the stream, we're going to put it at 50. We have 30, 13 likes right now with 19 people watching live. So again, if you haven't hit the like button, please do. What case should we start off with? Hmm. Mm, I wanted to go through the um, Vanderpump Rules lawsuit that we covered on, um, what was that? What day did we cover that? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, we covered that on Thursday where Raquel Rachel Levis is suing Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox for revenge corn. I did want to start off with that one. So let's go ahead and have Bossy 3, the Bossy B, bring us in for that. All right. So we got corn. Love the little corny mode. <laughs> <laughs> we have the corn revenge um, lawsuit. If you don't remember what happened in that lawsuit on Thursday, basically Raquel Lavez, she is a member of Vanderpump Rules cast or was a member of the Vanderpump Rules cast. Um, she had an affair with Tom Sandoval, who is also on Vanderpump Rules. And that Tom Sandoval is in a relationship with or was in a relationship with Ariana. Tom and Raquel cheated and then heard a um, corn video in Tom Sandoval's phone where um, Raquel is claiming that he did not have permission to record her, um, you know, what was I saying last stream? I can't even remember how I worded this. You worded it a few different ways. <laughs> She, <laughs> I can't even remember. And I, now I feel like I have no clean ways to say what she was actually doing. But um, she was, you know, um, entertaining herself, making adult entertainment for herself um, while on FaceTime with Tom Sandoval, which is, I mean, I guess normal in like a relationship setting, but in an affair setting, I'm kind of like, well, why would you subject yourself to that? It's pretty um, gutsy. It's pretty gutsy, right? And so apparently he recorded her without her permission. Also and gutsy. Yeah. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, iPhones tell you if someone's screen recording you. But oh, I do they? He's, yeah, it does. And so if she is on FaceTime, it shows you that, or it'll say someone took a screenshot or um, does it do it on screen recording? I don't know. I might be lying on the screen recording part, but I know for sure it does tell you when someone screenshots the um, the video that happened a couple of updates ago. And yeah. so um, she's saying that she didn't know about it. Um, and then Ariana discovers the video and sends it directly back to Raquel and basically say, you dirty whore. <laughs> and um, yesterday, Alpha told me that whore is a cuss word. I don't really agree with that, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's an unkind word, but a cuss word. I don't know. I don't think it's cussing when you said whore, but Alpha said it was. And I was like, well, I said it all up and down my channel yesterday. I didn't get yellow flag, did I? I don't, I don't think, think I so. I don't think no. so. <laughs> I don't think I did. So I was like, it's not a cuss word, and I'm sticking to that, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, when I was younger, um, I, there was a neighborhood friend uh, named Jorge. Mm-hmm. And before I knew what whore was, I was just being like, hey, whore, what's up? And my mom had to be like, no, 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 no. That's not a nickname we're going to use. <laughs> and being a child, right? <laughs> Yeah, you don't know when things are bad, which is a whole nother thing with that Nickelodeon um, documentary. I didn't oh put my it gosh. for today, but maybe we will still touch on it a little bit. Um, touch on it a little. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Anyways, Ariana sends the video to um, Raquel, and Raquel is also accusing her of sending the video to other people because at the end of the day, she ended up getting punched by another cast member who did, learned about the video. So, <laughs> just want to know, what did you think about that lawsuit, Kimmy? Um, I mean, I think that all three of them made horrible decisions that they shouldn't have made. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said earlier, I think it's pretty gutsy if you're going to be in an affair and cheating to also like be leaving well not a paper trail but to have any sort of like recording of it Mm -hmm. it's dumb of him to do and have on his phone especially if it wasn't consensual Uh it's super gutsy of her to be involved in and it also shows that it's not some like drunken spur of the moment or like whatever it's just a you know and i understand ariana being ariana how do you say it ariana ariana they call her Ariana on the show. Ariana. Okay. I understand her being pissed and sending it to her and calling her a dirty whore. Mm-hmm. Um, but then to put herself in potential legal trouble by spreading it right. doesn't seem necessary. I mean, she could have told people right. about it and said this happened without sharing it. Right. And I agree with that, too. I'm like, it's it's one thing to tell people that she's a dirty whore. And I found this video of her doing all of this activity on my man's phone. But a thing of like showing it to the other cast members or even the producers of the show, which she brings up the producers being an issue quite a bit in the lawsuit, although she didn't um, sue them directly. But to then send it to your friends and say, hey, look how much this girl is a dirty whore. I think that's a little bit, you know, um, jumping over you know, that line, that very thin line of, okay, revenge porn. Now, is it potentially revenge porn from Ariana sending the video directly to Raquel? Yes, it still is. Oh, it is. I think, yeah, because it's just the fact of disseminating it. It doesn't have to be, like, disseminating it to third parties. It just has to be disseminated. So the way that Raquel is um, saying in her um, complaint, she's saying that Ariana first sent it to herself from Tom's phone and then sent it to Raquel. So even her sending it to herself on her own phone, then to Raquel, now we already have two lines of distribution at that point. Um, So she probably would have been better off just sending it directly from Tom's phone. But even then just sending it in general without um, Raquel's consent would already be dissemination for the purposes of um, talking about revenge corn. Now would a reasonable person then try to sue (laughs) the person that discovered they were having an affair because she found corn on her man's phone of you. I don't think that's a reasonable thing to do, right? But right. if you are going to third parties, then I'm like, okay, that makes a lot more sense that she would, you know, sue her because now you're showing it to everybody on the cast. So I think it's a dumb lawsuit. I think I would be too embarrassed, too embarrassed um, to go sit in an attorney's office and say, hey, I'm an adulterer, but these people sent my adultering video to other people. And then you have to explain why you're an adulterer and all of the things. So, (laughs) yeah, because wasn't it on the first page that she was like, to be clear, she knows what she did was wrong. It was bad. Be sorry. But also, 
<laughs> exactly. But also they suck and you should make them pay me money. But it's like yeah. if you weren't spreading, you know, all your goods on the um FaceTime, <laughs> then yeah, we wouldn't be thing. in this situation. <laughs> yeah. We would not be in this situation if you were not, you know virtually promiscuous okay um but they also <laughs> did have a um they did have a physical relationship as well which is interesting and i said this on the last live stream they all just you know hook up with each other right yeah. it's a bad friend group i would not want to be in that friend group <laughs> well the thing is like if everyone's gonna hook up with each other anyway then why not as a group just decide it's okay like why make it an issue or don't do it yeah right because i mean <laughs> if, if you want to be in an open relationship or do whatever then like just say that and do that right especially nowadays that's so much more common and like mm -hmm. socially acceptable and all that stuff so just say what you mean and mean what you say if you don't want to be monogamous don't pretend like you will be right Right. And um, I already kind of went through some of the timeline about everybody else that has cheated on this show and all of the things. Um, but what was really um, bad about these particular people cheating, in my opinion, is that Tom Sandoval, who is the boyfriend to Ariana, who cheated with Raquel, actually helped James Kennedy, who was engaged to Raquel, so complete cool. the engagement. Like, he paid for the engagement. Um, he set things up. They made, like, a mini Coachella for her that they were calling Rochella. Um, and he proposed to her on the actual Coachella uh, fairgrounds when it was closed because of COVID. So I was like, how, like, did you do that because that was your dream proposal to her? Because I, I don't think he started liking her after James and Raquel broke up. I think he's always had a little thing he wanted to hook up with Raquel. I don't, I don't think anything has ever came out of it, but that to me is like creepy. You're, you paid for my engagement to another man. And now yeah. we're hooking up. Like you didn't feel like she didn't feel weird hooking up with him, knowing that he helped pay for her engagement to someone well, else. It makes me wonder, like, yeah, he might have liked her while she was engaged to someone else, or like he never really liked her. It's just a physical sexual thing. Yeah. Like, I don't care. And then being part of the engagement was just maybe like an ego thing like oh look i helped my friend i'm so good i have the money to do all this stuff right. like i don't think it was about anyone but himself kind of oh yeah he's for sure i mean i can't diagnose people but he's probably on that line of narcissism and so the thing about him engaging helping his friend engage right he was in a relationship with ariana for 10 years and they both always said that they did not want to get married and so they didn't propose and they didn't get married so i i almost wonder if he felt like he was missing out on right. you know proposing because his girl i think it's more of her that didn't it, want to get married that's how i remember it i didn't realize it's been 10 years already mm -hmm. but i definitely remember she was not into Maybe the not idea of marriage years. Maybe well, not. Yeah. A while. Yeah. It's but, been a while. Definitely over I, five. And I mean, if I was her right now, I'd be like, thank God I'm not married to this person. Like, getting out of the house that they own together is messy enough. Imagine a whole marriage. But that I have comments on that as well. Yeah. We, we haven't covered that one on this channel. Um, but we briefly touched on it on Rob's channel, but I did, we didn't really go into like the legalities of owning the house. So, um, I guess we can talk about that. So let me go ahead and go through the chats and then we'll jump over to the house issue with them. Did that would have been better off being married to him as far as going to divide the house. Did I put that document in the drive or do you need it for the house? I don't need it, uh, and I don't okay. think it's the drive. I just, I'm just gonna briefly give a discuss. summary of it, and then okay. discuss, like why she would have been better off. And shout out to Tanya D gifting a boss attorney breed membership. So who ended up getting that? That went to uh, the Vince Moore. So welcome to the Rehive membership. You may now join the live stream, which is link pinned in the link or link pinned. Yeah, the link is pinned. <laughs> 
the link is pinned if you do want to join live and chat with us. Um, and then for all the other members that want to join live and chat with us, the link to join is pinned. And also it is in the members community tab that I forgot to post, but Kimmy saved us and posted, a, uh, posted it right before the live stream started. So uh, make sure that you join. And thank you again, Tanya D, for gifting a Boss Attorney Brie membership. Definitely appreciate it. The members get cool badges next to their name, cool emojis that they get to use. And it also supports the channel. And then you also get to join these live streams, which we're waiting on some of our friends to join. As Come on, see. y'all. <laughs> Come on and join. Come on and join. So let me go ahead and see if I can find any um, chats that have to do with um, the case because we've been kind of running our mouths. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, here let me... Yeah, I'm starting some. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like trying to read and talk. It does not go over well. Again, thank you, Tanya D, for gifting the membership. Definitely appreciate it. Just me, MD, saying hi to Tanya D. Hello to the Bree Hive. You guys have an awesome time. Catch you on the replay. See you Tuesday. I think I already read that one, but yes. Oh, <laughs> I am by to just me, MD. It's okay. Uh, Deacon Fatal says they aren't friends as far as the Vanderpump Rolls group. Yeah, I, I agree with you that they do not, if, if they are are friends they're not very good friends like frenemies <laughs> yeah like frenemies and it's like it's weird like there's so many people in the world and you guys live in LA that's like where the attractive people are deemed to live are you telling me you can't find anyone else like he shaves his forehead girls move <laughs> on like why the fact uh that just I don't know why but I cannot get past that yeah like, and I'm do better He's an interesting character to me, though, because he wears, like, women's high heels. But, oh, really? yeah, because he's, like, a fashionista. Fast, mm -hmm. Fashionista. I don't know what you call it. For fashionista. Him. Yeah. <laughs> he's a fashionista, and um, he'll wear, like, women's high heel shoes, but then he calls himself straight. So, I mean, I don't know if he's just, like in tune with his femininity or whatever it is, but yeah, uh, he, he's an interesting character and he really dresses, he dresses up probably more than the girls on the show. So, um, yeah. not my type, but apparently, you know, <laughs> some people like what are, what is her name? Um, Raquel likes him. She went from one controlling guy to another controlling guy, um, that likes to out fashion the women on the show. I mean, <laughs> that's not my type, but like, I kind, I, I do respect that though for yeah. guys to be so secure. And then for him though, I could see it as an ego thing. Oh yeah, he's trying very to very image based. The <laughs> yeah, so interesting. I, I didn't watch that far in the series to see him start doing that. Well, he doesn't like wear them all the time, but they yeah. like put on a fashion show and he decided he needed high heels for whatever reason, as if he's not already tall, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, I guess heels aren't for the purpose of making you tall, but I just don't see how it made his outfit any better than what it was. So um, yeah. I think he's just an interesting character. I think he likes to upstage people um, and just kind of be the center of attention. Like, how do you help someone propose? to someone and then hook up with them afterwards and you say that guy was like your best friend yeah tanya d says people will do anything for fame or infamy and yeah <laughs> yeah and then the lawsuit is like it made them mega celebrities it absolutely did not absolutely did not make them mega celebrities that's a no <laughs> mind spasm interesting name says how can you say in one breath that spreading this personal info is embarrassing and then file a public lawsuit then have the same video explored in open court yeah yeah we talked about that i think it's embarrassing information i would be too embarrassed to go to um an attorney and explain this and then go into court and explain this to a judge it's like okay, if you weren't like spread eagle on FaceTime, would we really be in this position? No. Is it still wrong for him to do? Sure. But do you deserve money for, you know, causing an affair? And are we going to have to see this video in open court? That That's a good question. Are we going to have to watch this video or are jurors going to be subjected to watch this video in private? I don't know. 
I don't know how they're going to get around that video, but you have to view the evidence, right? Or are they going to just stipulate that the video does exist? They can. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine they would stipulate. Right. I would hope they would. And I would think they would have to stipulate to the actual elements of the video, like this is a screen recording versus like a recording that she sent to him. Well, I wonder if Tom's side would stipulate to and agree that it's a screen recording that was made without consent as opposed to being something that was sent to him. Well, that's what I would, I would, I would assume they would stipulate that it is a video recording of her doing the things and that it is screen recorded, but I don't think that he would admit that he screen recorded it mm -hmm. without permission. He may mm -hmm. say it was screen recorded, it, but I told her, you know, it will be so cool if I recorded this. And she was like, yeah, record it. Uh, like, you know, because it's going to be a he say, she say versus if he had permission or not. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, Mind Spasm says this is a money grab because a lot of people profited from her nastiness and she didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could be, but I don't know if they really profited that much from it. Because they were on the show anyways. I know the show was about to die, but. Was it? That, See, and I was wondering if it really was. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I didn't mean to know. Oh, yeah. That's what she was claiming in the document. Well, because she also claimed that this is what made them all mega stars, though. So I wonder the show if that's accurate. On, the show has been on for 11 seasons. I don't think that her uh, self-made corn is what made them mega celebrities. They're already getting restaurant deals and all kinds of sponsorships before that video. And a lot of the more the more famous people on the show are not even on the show anymore. So I know she liked to she would like to think that she's that relevant, but I really don't. I think it might have gave a little bit more sauce for the new season to have a little bit more viewership than it's had in the past few seasons. But mega celebrities, I would probably say no. So yeah. there's that. Uh, Tanya D says, wait, this happened years ago and she's just now suing. No, it happened last year. This one happened last year. Um, but there's a bunch of other people that have been cheating back and forth on that show. I think that might be what you're referring to. Tanya D says he's not Prince. <laughs> no, actually, Tanya D, he is like trying to dress like Prince, just as like regular fashion. Like you're just walking down the street. <laughs> No, no, that's exactly who he's trying to dress like. He's trying to dress like Prince. <laughs> He'll have on like a net shirt and like high heel boots. And it's like, yeah, fine. But why are you, what, what do you need the boots for, sir? You're trying to, um, well, I guess he won the competition. So I guess that's what he needed the boots for. Um, let's see. Haley G says he's an interesting character. That's an understatement. <laughs> He is very interesting. And he likes to make the whole show about him. So it doesn't surprise me that he's involved in this scandal. This mm -hmm. scandal. They call it scandal. Time Lord says heels were originally designed by and made for men. I know. Isn't that interesting how it did shift? But it's, I don't know. I think he's just trying to upstage the women, honestly. Uh, Tiny D says eel. <laughs> the eel for shaving his forehead. Yeah, Kimmy, what is... I don't know about that, the shaving the forehead thing. I feel like that was in the very first season where he was talking about how he likes to take care of himself. And I'm pretty sure he or Kristen even said that it takes him longer to get ready than it takes her. Mm -hmm. And he, like, shaved his forehead. <laughs> like, that was... Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember that. But he's just, like... He is, like, super into his appearance, but I don't think he's, like, the hottest thing walking. Like, I don't... I think even if he put in less attention to detail in himself, I think he would probably look a little bit better. Yeah. Just my opinion. He's not. He's like a caricature. Yeah. He wants to be, you know different and outstanding i guess uh tiny d says can you pull up a picture of these people i don't know them okay i can do that let me see. i've got some too. oh I you do yeah okay can you share the screen yeah i think okay. let me um, 
Okay. So, let's see. This, this guy's Tom Sandoval. This one's Ariana. Mm -hmm. And if we go into the three, so we have Ariana on the left, Sandoval in the middle, and Rachel slash Raquel, whatever, on the right. And she was previously engaged to James, this guy. Woo. Look at him. He's so serious with his DJing. James. But yeah, but um, I forgot to make the flow toward connecting. I'm still going to do that. So the <laughs> next, next time we discuss it, I pinky promise we'll have the flow chart, beautiful mind style, like all that good stuff. <laughs> Okay. And um, Deacon Fatal was also saying she doesn't know who it <laughs> is. And you know what? That picture that you pulled up with Raquel, can you bring it back up? Yeah. With her and the, the three of them together. Yeah. Yes. Because I didn't, on the show, they were talking about her nose job and I didn't really notice it. But in this picture, you can definitely see. Oh, you can't see my mouse because you're the one doing it. You can definitely see her nose is a little bit cricket. Because she got a nose job and it kind of messed up her nose. Is it just me? Does her nose look cricket or is it just me? I can, I can kind of see the... Yeah. Yeah. And then her nose was fine before, but I mean, I guess Hollywood. And I really don't think nose jobs helps a lot of people because... I don't really see the difference when people get their nose jobs a lot of the times. Yeah, unless it's like a pretty extreme before. Yeah. And I don't even think they can make that drastic of changes in the first revision. Oh, yeah. Too. And I, I guess like when people have like that hump on those their nose, that one is a lot more noticeable to me. Mm -hmm. But like when they're just trying to make their nose a little bit more button, I'm like, okay, what was wrong with your nose the first time? And how do you know your new nose is going to look good on your face? Yeah. I couldn't, I can't yeah. imagine a different nose on my face. Well, and also like trends and all that stuff change. Right. Like, even with no shapes or standards of this is cute or that's in or that's not, like, it's just, and I've heard mm -hmm. nose jobs, aren't they supposed to be, I've had two sinus surgeries, mm -hmm. and they were pretty sucky alone, mm -hmm. but with what I've heard with how they have to, like, break your nose and do all of that stuff, yeah. that sounds brutal for a maybe. Yeah, for maybe I'll look better. And a lot of people with plastic surgery, I feel like they look better before they actually got their plastic surgery. That's just my opinion. But, you know, I'm not in Hollywood for a reason. Um, can you shift over to Tom, Tom Sandoval? I think with this lawsuit, he was trying to, like, make his debut into the adult entertainment world because that for sure is a corn stash that he has going on. It's a corn stash. It's a creepy smile. Like, I hate everything about this picture. It's so bad. Yeah, so I think it, it, he has the little one earring going on. So, yep. you know, perfect corn guy for sure. For sure. I don't know what kind of scene he would be in, but he for sure... He fits the bill of, of a corn star. He's he's trying. Yeah. <laughs> Look how hairless that forehead is. Hairless forehead. <laughs> oh, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> no, the pictures are very interesting. And I think that girl should have never touched her nose. I think he needs to take that mustache off. And then he has like no beard. So it makes it even cornier or yeah. corn stasher or corn star -ish. Cornier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. Um, let's see. We got Haley G saying the show was definitely on the downswing. I agree with that. It was going downhill from there, but still, I don't think it made it more popular. I feel like there was a hype surrounding it for a little bit when this information came out, and then it kind of went away again. Uh, Deacon Fatal says, wait, how can you get a restaurant deal without being a chef or adjacent? So they're pretty, the person that they work for owns restaurants. So that's, it's called Vanderpump Rules because they all literally were waiters, bartenders, hostesses. Though that was their jobs. A lot of them were doing that because they were also trying to break into stardom. So the woman that owns the, um, owns the actual restaurants that they work for she offered the toms tom sandoval and tom schwartz a restaurant that's called tom tom in um in la so 
they have a restaurant deal. The other ones are mostly just kind of making their own brand and try to, you know, make money other ways by being like Insta famous and things like that. But uh, the two Toms, they do have a restaurant deal because they work at a restaurant and they were popular characters on the show. And the boss um, is from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yes, yes. It's Lisa Vanderpump. She's from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She owns several restaurants and. Um, now Tom and Tom are trying to make their own restaurant without Lisa's help. And I'm oh, they going, are? Yeah, they have. They, it's called like Swartz and Sandy's. It's a bad name. Yeah. It's a bad name. <laughs> it's a bad idea, I would I think. It's a very bad name. And so that was a lot of the talk on um, season nine that I've been binge watching on. But yeah, no, I don't think they're doing um, but yeah, well, they're only five percent owners in Lisa Vanderp- Lisa's Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant, though. So. They're only five five percent each. Oh well, then <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're making their own without Lisa because they know that they're not going to have that much say over any restaurant that they create with Lisa. Well, they're about to learn why they weren't given that much say. Yeah, Swartz and Sandy's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. It, that almost sounds like a corn video name. <laughs> it does. <laughs> sounds like a corn studio. Yes. <laughs> Brought to you by Schwartz and Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the voice. You said <laughs> I haven't used my voice effects in a while. <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh, Tiki Fiddle says, who is this man? Harpo is the vibe I am getting. Well, according to Ra- Raquel, they're all mega celebrities now, but they're not. Tiki Fiddle says, yes, it heels were made for men, manly men. <laughs> I don't know if I would consider him a manly man, manly man. Uh, Tiny D says, again, there's only one prince. He wants to be Prince so bad with the way that he dresses, in my opinion. Oh, because isn't he, um, he also does music, right? Yeah, he has a band. Okay. Yeah, he does. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Kentari says, same. Bravo is not even a thing where I live. Yeah, there a lot of their shows are dying off. I don't like. I don't watch a lot of the things that I used to watch on there. Uh, Deacon Fatal says, okay, this pick is saying a lot without saying it, <laughs> right? Mind Spasm says he's going to lose. Have you ever heard him speak publicly and answer questions? Disaster. No, I haven't. I don't pay attention to them outside of the show. And I stopped watching the show for a really long time. And you know what? The guy is pretty aggressive. Like, he always wants to be involved in conversations when no one's talking to him. And then he's like super agitated and aggressive about it. So I don't like him. He's never been one of my favorite characters on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deacon Fatal says, yeah, I've broken my nose before it healed on its own and it's still crooked. Yeah. So imagine paying someone $15,000 to break your nose and it comes out crooked. Mm Mm-mm. And then she went to like try to get it revised, and they were like, "Yeah, thirty-two thousand dollars." I'm like, "That's a car. That is a brand new whip. You can get like a brand new Tesla for that price." Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and then you add the fifteen on top of that. Are you right? Serious? Forty-seven thousand dollars for there to be a maybe your nose will get corrected. That's how much like a lot of people make in a year. Yeah, that's someone's whole salary to okay. fix your nose, and nothing was wrong with her nose before. I don't know that- if you can find a picture of her her nose before. Let me see. I didn't I did not see anything wrong with a girl's face before. So I don't know. Plastic surgery, it's not my topic because I'm gonna say nine times out of ten people don't need it. Um it became so cosmetic versus like a necessity, which is what it was created for, was for necessity. And people were like, well, I got money. Let me go buy a new butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deacon Fatal says, I can't wait for big nostrils to be all the rage. <laughs> I don't know if that will ever. Do you think that will happen? I don't know if that will happen. I don't know. But I mean, I, I I'm thing. down for it. <laughs> 
I know, because w- probably when I was a kid, I, I would have never thought that big lips would be a thing. And now everyone's trying to pump their lips till. And then my question is, once that goes out of style and thin lips are in again, how are they going to reduce? Like, do you get saggy skin afterwards? Well, because aren't fillers temporary? Yeah, they go down at all. So you have so- to keep getting them. So, I mean, I guess if Finn is in, again, just stop doing well, my it. But is do your lips get saggy? Because if oh. you're stretching your skin out, that because some people, oh, right, they like pump those things in there. There's even implants, right? I don't know. I think that there's even Implant? lip implants. Ugh, that's gross. Yeah. I'm thinking, <laughs> though, you talking about people pumping them up makes me think you remember how they had those challenges or whatever they mm-hmm. were doing on like imagine if big nostrils do become a thing what people are gonna be shoving things in their nose like what? that would be a disaster <laughs> oh boy i don't know about that i just i wanted to see when lips go out of style and what people's lips look like or i'm sure they could get like skin tightening surgery on their lips but th- that would be that very is so wild <laughs> skin tightening surgery on your lips like at what point do we say we've gone too far <laughs> like i like that would be hard to hide because you know like if you get breast implants and then you take them out that's easy to kind of fix because no one's looking under your bra all the time Mm -hmm. but like lips are literally on your face so you can you can tell after a certain amount like (laughs) it's it's interesting i don't know i don't know what the purpose is like just love yourself that's my that's my thing um, Amy Evans says, I weirdly feel bad for Tom. He has been crucified for something everyone has done on that show. Only difference is the amount of time they were together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that they are a little bit more mega celebrity, though, as well. Um, And the fact that it was, no, they all do it with different cast members. But you know what, Jax and Kristen. Kristen was the one that was crucified out of the group with Jax when Jax mm-hmm. did it. But, um... It's Tom's turn. It's Tom's well, turn. And also, the amount of time they were together and the fact that they had, like, invested in a home together and all of that stuff, I do feel like that makes more of a difference than these, like, one-year, two-year relationships. I think, I think Stassi and Jax were in a relationship for a substantial period of time. I think at least three years. But... Oh. Also, they were not on the TV show at the time. Ariana, yeah. excuse me, Ariana and Tom Sandoval's um, relationship grew on, like it came That's to be true. on the That's show. true. Versus yeah. Jax and Stassi's affair happened like at the very beginning of the show. So no one really cared. <laughs> I mean, not to say no one really cared, but no one really cared. Um and then I, th- I believe Jax did it to Britney too, if I'm not mistaken. Not with someone on the cast, but I think he cheated on her too. And he got crucified for that. So I think they all get crucified just depending on what extent, depending on if the character was on the show or not. Yeah. Not character, these are people. I don't know why I'm calling them a character. Well, because they are though. <laughs> like, to an extent, right? Uh, they, you- yeah. Dicky Fiddle says, okay, I kind of want to learn how to make money without any talent. Yeah, get on a TV show. Don't we all? Yeah. Dicky Fiddle said, oh, I think I already got that one. I didn't close it. Um, it really does. Let's see. Dicky Fiddle says, shut up. He does. He <laughs> Yeah, he does music. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and he wants to be the new prince. Dicky Fiddle says, prince would never do that. <laughs> Cheat on his girlfriend who he's telling not to marry that they don't need to get married tiny d says you said it brie have their characters how about trying to just be a person i'm just saying yeah and and that's what it could be i think they're all just crazy they're all crazy in my opinion adikin uh, fatal says freaking madonna uh-oh i just deleted one adikin uh, fatal says she looked great and then decided to hate her aging yeah she she changed her whole entire look whole entire look Deacon Fatal said, and who in the world is Tom? It this the guy that we're talking about that we just showed with the corn stash. 
<laughs> Did you find a picture of Raquel in her old nose? Um, almost. I got a little distracted. Apparently, um, she also in 2022 made headlines for having a makeout sesh with Tom Schwartz, the other yeah. one, after mm-hmm. his like divorce. Yeah. Did you say that? I missed that. Uh, I said it on Thursday stream. So mm-hmm. yeah, she was just whoring it up to tell you the truth. She made out with Tom Schwartz, who is Tom Sandoval's business partner and best friend for real. Um, and Tom Schwartz was married to Katie Maloney, who was also on the show, but they recently went through a divorce and Raquel just decided she was going to make out with him. And I believe it was on the same day or one of the days where uh, Tom Sanderball and Raquel um, hooked up. So she was just she was just whoring it up for the whole cast at that point. If they didn't catch her uh, this early, she probably would have kept going to each of the other cast members, in my opinion, allegedly. Homie always. hopping. Hmm? Homie hopping. Homie hopping for sure. Yeah. And then, so while you pull that up um i just want to remind everyone that our like goal for the stream is 50 likes we have 20 people watching live with 28 likes so if you have not hit the like button yet please do it does help us out in the algorithm and it does help us get more friends for the channel and let me see if we actually reached our goal and i don't even have my phone so i can't i guess i can check here let's see did we reach our goal for the last live stream do 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 content oh it was right there in my face spring let's see we are at 200 views go to analytics and we are at how many likes where i need the likes where do you find the likes (laughs) i don't even know how to use my youtube studio half the time anyways it's not even showing me what i need to see so no for for what the last stream the lies the last live stream yeah the last live stream. Um, 98. We are at 98. So we didn't reach the replay crew like goal, which was 125, I think. So oh, we didn't reach our live goals this week. That's okay. Or at least for Thursday's live stream. Yeah. <laughs> well, we reached one of the like goals on the live stream, which was the initial 50 likes. Um, I wanted to, what was that? You told me to pull something up. Kimmy and I forgot what it was. Oh, the brandy letter? Yeah. Okay. That is what it is. Thank you. Okay. I think I got some um images. Okay. Go ahead and share them once you have them ready. I'm trying to find the letter. Okay. So that's before. Four, right because i mean it looks straight but i guess oh does it look any different um well and then there's i mean i guess like bigger um like it looks like it she tried to go for the like thin thing maybe oh but i don't know I think it looks fine though yeah i think so too I think, I think it's, it looks better. I don't think it looks that much different, honestly. So I don't even know if it looks better or not. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's sad to be that, like, insecure. And, I mean, I can only imagine the mm-hmm. comments that these people must get mm-hmm. that are real, real nasty and real hard. And if you already have an insecurity, people have a way of picking that out. But... My thing is, she looks like she has a nose that a lot of people try to get already before the surgery, and I don't even notice my nose. But I mean, I guess, like you said, if you're like posting all the time and people are are looking at you all the time, so maybe they're making comments about it. Um, yeah. I'm on the internet too, and I don't even notice my nose. <laughs> I, I'm not a mega celebrity like them, no, but I definitely don't focus on my nose when I'm thinking about content. Um <laughs> But, you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different insecurities. So there's that. Okay. I wanted to talk about the whole house thing with Ariana and um, Tom Sandoval. So let's have Bossy bring us in. 
Okay, so Tom Sandoval, Ariana, they are the couple being sued by Raquel Lavis for the revenge corn. But also, Ariana has a lawsuit against Tom to sell their house that they bought together. If you remember, like I said, they are not married. And so since they are not married, Tom Sandoval just doesn't want to sell the house and give her half the equity in the house because we are all going to assume since Tom is requesting an accounting to determine how much he should get and how much Ariana should get, I'm going to assume that Tom is probably primarily responsible for paying the mortgage on the house. So the accounts are going to reflect that Tom has put more money into the house, which makes him um, a majority owner over Ariana. So it it is likely not going to be a 50 50 split in the actual equity in the house. Now, these people are about 40 years old. They've been together for at least over five years. I'm thinking closer to 10, if not 10 years. Um, and they said that they never wanted to get married. They do live in California, which you guys know is the state that I practice in. And I actually practice family law in this state. Um, if they were to actually get married, like smart people, you know, like, um, what do you call it? What's her name? Katie Maloney and Tom Schwartz, who also bought a house together around the same time as Tom and uh, Ariana, but they were married when they purchased their house or shortly thereafter them getting, um, they bought the house shortly there, but shortly before they got married. I'm pretty sure they were married when they bought their house. If they were married, it would not matter whose bank account the mortgage payments were coming out of because any money that either one of them were incurring would have been considered community property. Um, so that means that they would have owned the house 50-50, no matter if Tom was the one paying the uh, mortgage while Ariana was paying light bills or whatever their split was. Um, he wouldn't then be able to come back and say, well, actually, I paid more into the house so I should get 75% of the equity and she should only get 25 because she only put the down payment into the house and you know light bills don't go towards paying the mortgage so if you are in California and you do not want to get married do not buy a house with someone or this is not legal advice by the way um <laughs> or if you are going to buy a house together you need to get something signed that says you guys are both 50 percent owners of the house and not make it um i forgot what kind what they're holding the house as but um make it in a way where each of you are 50 50 um i think that you need to be joint tenants with the right of survivorship for it to be 50 50 ownership i can't remember i think there's this in common or something like that and i'm not onto real estate so i don't know everything but i know when, when you're married it is joint tenancy with the right of survivorship or they call it like joint tenancy community property or whatever it is but you get 50 percent, no matter if you didn't work a freaking day in your life and your husband made all of the mortgage payments you are entitled to 50% of that mortgage payment if you're married. If you are not married, you are not automatically entitled to that. So um, if you don't want to get married and you're wanting to buy a property with people, you need to have contracts out of the wazoo, okay? <laughs> um, she also didn't make the best decision when she decided that they were going to put a home, a, a, um, what is it, a home equity line of credit onto their home for Tom's restaurant again. Something that she does not get any money out of, to Swartz and Sandy. She was like, oh, yeah, I'm just signing it. Um, this loan is not going to affect me. Ma'am, <laughs> you're putting a $90,000 loan onto your house that you own with someone else. They're not going to say, oh, wow, you guys own it together. So we'll just take his half of the house. Ariana, you stay on this side. This side is now the banks because he didn't pay his loan. So I don't know who's advising her. <laughs> and the decisions that she's financially making with this man who obviously cannot keep his ping ping to himself. Um, but she did not make good decisions there. And even thinking that, oh, yeah, I'm going to help him sign a home, uh, a line of credit for the home and think that it doesn't affect you. I don't know why she would even think that. So I don't know if you guys heard about that portion of that case, but. Um, I think it's going to be pretty messy and she's going to be very, very disappointed. And I know when you're in a relationship and you're in love in the beginning and you're buying houses together, you think that they're not going to screw you over. They're going to screw you over. 
Because people are not the same people as they are when you marry them versus when you're breaking up with them. Especially if he did something wrong. <laughs> he, and he really done messed up to like to have a girlfriend who is that supportive mm -hmm. that yes we could take a line of credit out on our home for your business she has right. no rights to that business mm -mm. yeah already absolutely not he would have had to figure it out himself he would have had to figure that out himself. Even Katie and Tom, I think he didn't qualify for the line of credit, but he ended up just getting a private business loan, which would easily be, you know, we could easily push that off to him because it's only in his name. And if Tom is as nice as he portrays himself to be on the show or not as nice as not want to be, he, he doesn't like conflict a lot, Tom Schwartz, um, he probably just took that debt on and let his wife go about her life without subjecting her to that business credit since he didn't want her to be a part of the freaking business to begin with. Um, so why pass that debt on to her? Uh, Tom Sandoval, on the other hand, is saying that his $90,000 loan should be paid before any equity be divided. So that would be taking money out of Ariana's half. That's cute. Yeah, he's a dick. I'm sorry. I don't have a better word for this live stream. But no. yeah, <laughs> he took out $90,000. He wants that paid before they divide the rest of the equity. And then on top of that, he wants an additional whatever percentage of him paying the loan. <laughs> the unmitigated audacity. <laughs> the like, audacity is real. I don't know where he keeps it all. That's wild. That's insane. Like, not only did you take out 90000 you want her to pay the 90000 plus give you extra? No. Why don't we divide it? If you get 75%, fine. I take my 25. You have to pay your $90,000 whether your 75% covers it or not. Yes. <laughs> it's for your business. Like, just because your business is going to fail and you're doing dumb decisions... Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, he's, um, yeah. I hope he never gets another girlfriend in the rest of his life. Like, you have to be insane if you decide to date him after this. I mean, it'll be a certain kind of woman who does. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to jump into the chat on this one. All right, we got Deacon Fatal saying this is not legal advice. If you put your name on the mortgage, keep it in your name. Yeah, and don't sign home equity loan lines of credit for people who do not want to marry you. I say don't really buy a house before you get married, honestly, unless you have um, full on protection for yourself or you guys are actually splitting things down the middle, mortgage 50% or whatever percentage you guys are comfortable with getting at the end of the divorce. Um, I don't know how things work in other states, but this is what's going on with Tom and um, Ariana in California. Tanya D says, so what happens when you get a divorce? Do you have to buy the other person out of their half of the house? Yes. So if you want to keep the house, you have to give the person the amount of equity in the house um, that they would be entitled to if you sold it. And you can't reduce it by, okay, well, I'll give you half the equity in the house, but if we were to sell it, then there will be realtor fees. So then I got to take out an extra $20,000. No, you cannot do that. You have to give them the amount of equity in the house, period, because you don't have the seller's cost and things. Now, if you cannot afford to buy them out of the house, you will have to sell the house, pay the um, seller's fees, and then you guys split it down the middle. So um, yes, if you want to keep the house, buy them out. If you don't want to keep the house or neither one of you can afford to keep the house because most people have to refinance to keep the house changing the interest rate and all of the things and we know the interest rate sucks right now um then you just sell the house and you get you know some money in your pocket hopefully if you have equity in your house deacon fatal says so he had a dream <laughs> uh absolutely not he has foolishness for sure for sure he does a small says hello rehab hello welcome into the live stream nice to see you today hopefully you join us live small we would love to hear your points uh deacon fado says i love uh i don't know how he is story is giving me gas but it is <laughs> um oh i don't know how his story is giving me gas but it is yeah um he's horrible that's all i can say about him at this point i think he 
is a bad guy. He's he's a bad guy to date, in my opinion. And like I said, if anyone, I really just hope he never gets another girlfriend ever in his life. Yeah. So we have some things. If we can take down the banner. All right, let's bossy B shift us. Okay, we have some new Brie artistic abilities approaching us, okay? I spent this morning doing a new transition for us for the light goal. And although we have not hit the light goal yet for the stream, we're at 31 likes. The light goal for the stream is 50 likes. So if you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so that we can reach our like goal for the stream. And so moving on, we have two versions of our like goal video. So I'm going to play them for you and I'm putting up a poll right now into the chat. It says, which like goal swoop do you prefer? Explosion first. The, I'm not going to tell you which one I like better. Explosion first, that's going to be video number one or explosion second. That's going to be video number two. They're very similar. The explosion just comes in a different order. So I'm going to play them. Don't vote yet. <laughs> I'm going to play them and then let me know which one that you like. Who voted already? <laughs> okay, no, it just went away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it just shrunk. I was like, no, don't vote yet. Don't vote yet. Okay, so here's video number one for our like goal animation. Here we go. Scary, right? <laughs> that, whew, I'm glad that it like leaves the mics. I truly like yelped a little bit. That startled me. Okay, can we see that? Okay, I don't, I don't think I fully processed it. Can we see it like one more time? I'm sorry. <laughs> and that scared me, and I knew it was coming. <laughs> okay, I might I might know which way I'm voting, but can we? <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna do it again. So prepare yourselves. Here we go. Okay. Oh man. Okay, so that's video number one. I'm like okay. crying, y'all. <laughs> oh already voted. <laughs> okay, and then we have video number two. Maybe the explosion is just a little bit too loud. The, yeah. <laughs> um, it didn't sound that loud because I uploaded it on my iPad. But once I'm playing okay. it here on the live stream, it's very loud. Because I really like the graphics. And mm -hmm. I like, like the first video mm -hmm. more, kind of. Like the how explosion? it has that. And then it opens up into the... But that, uh, that, that woke me up. Like, whoo. Okay. And the votes are going back and forth. We have vo four votes right now. If you guys would like to vote to help us pick which one um, of the the like goal animations that you like the best, make sure you check out the poll and start voting. We'll give you like five minutes to get your opinion together. I'm like literally crying because that first one literally scared me. And I knew it was coming. <laughs> like it scared me so bad. And I don't want to like traumatize people that aren't here. <laughs> will we play it for the first time? I mean, it will wake people up. <laughs> I wake. I am so awake right now, but, oh, <laughs> so far the first one is actually winning, which has me shocked. Well, <laughs> we might need to do a follow-up of like, because I like, I, I like the first one graphically. Okay. But we need to maybe balance the levels on that or have some sort of like warning or something, because that. I mean, well, if it startled you and you knew it was coming, imagine not. I know. And I don't want to give people heart attacks on my live stream. <laughs> Woo. Go ahead and give me a comment. I really like them, though. Like, you did a great job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I had to do a couple of versions to try to figure out 
how I like it. But yeah, go ahead and vote a little bit. I can't. I'm just cracking up at this, but I'm trying to get my life back together. Uh, Dukey Biddle says, I keep a lawyer on standby just in case I meet my guy just to write up a prenup if he doesn't agree or negoti- uh, negoti- our negotiations are over. That makes sense. That makes sense. Especially if you already have things. When I came into my marriage, I didn't have much. Well, also, though, um, I've seen the argument, which I kind of like for prenups, that like discussing how debt would be handled Mm -hmm. and things like that, that it's not only about assets for prenups, it's liabilities. And that can be a big one. That is true because, um, especially in California, I don't know how it works in other states. Um, we're a community property state. So any debt that your husband is incurring is also debt that you're incurring. Um, so if like for the example I gave on Tom or not Tom's on Rob's stream, um, if your husband likes to buy bowling balls every week and he has a $20,000 credit card worth of bowling ball purchases, you're technically responsible for paying off that $20,000 worth of bowling balls. And let's say you don't have the $20,000 worth of bowling ball debt anymore, but there are $20,000 worth of bowling balls. You guys are going to have to split those bowling balls or he's going to have to pay you out for being being able to keep all of the bowling balls. So yeah, that does make sense as far as the debt goes. I didn't think about that. Um, but anything incurred before the marriage is considered in California, at least considered separate property anyways. But, um, do you want to have to prove that this person had this debt before you got married? Or if you have a bowling ball fanatic, um, during your marriage and you find out that he's buying all of these expensive bowling balls, are you going to want to have to pay for them? (laughs) I know a lot of people just hope that their husband or their wife is going to be reasonable and not be a dick and make you pay for bowling balls they know that you don't use. But, you know, I've seen a lot of bad things in family court. So there's isn't, that. Isn't there more um, violence in family courts than any other type? Yeah. I, well, I don't know if that, I don't know the actual statistics of behind it, but we do get a lot of restraining orders. People do freak out when people leave them and people do freak out when they realize that their partner has $50,000 worth of debt that you now have to be responsible for. Um, yeah. So yeah, people are very serious about their money and their kids. And that is literally family law, <laughs> literally all we do in family law. So um, I can see if a st- statistic came out, of that, I would believe it for sure, but I don't really know. Um, Deacon Fatal says, I don't care for the explosion, so I will leave it to the chat. Um, <laughs> it says one is scary. <laughs> it was a little scary. I, I will agree with you on that one. <laughs> Deacon Fatal says, okay, I thought those were teeth. What were teeth? The Oh. <laughs> Um, Deacon Fatal says, now I wonder why the like button looks like teeth to me. It's just like open. Oh. <laughs> Oh, the actual like button looked like teeth to you? Oh, I thought it was the opening up part. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tanya D says, I thought they were teeth too. (laughs) Dang it. That's what Canva had for a like button. (laughs) I don't know what to do now. Uh, Tanya D says, I like the second one either way. Can you turn the volume down on the explosion? That's what I would have to do because, like I said, that did scare me. (laughs) (laughs) Deacon Fatal says exactly so. In Alabama, if a man isn't paying his child support, that would come back to me. Not necessarily. Child support is considered a separate property thing. Um, so um I'm pretty sure this works like this in multiple states, but in California, if you are married to someone who is paying child support and you get a divorce, you can technically ask for half of the child support uh, payments back because all of the payments that they were making were considered community property and child support is a separate property alley, um, a separate property issue. So if he was paying $500 per month and you guys were married for a year, um, you would be entitled to $250 per month back of him paying the the um, child support unless he was paying it from a separate property fund or you guys like in a prenup agreed that the 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 community will not ask for reimbursement for paying child support back same thing with like your student loans that's a separate property obligation as well if you're paying that um your student loans while married your partner can technically ask for half of those payments back so if you're married for 25 years you pay fifty thousand dollars that spouse is going to be entitled to twenty five thousand dollars back from the payments that you already made to the 
the um, student loan department. So um, just discuss. Most people don't ask for that back, though. I think that's a bit petty. Most people don't ask for it back. So I don't know what you guys think about that. Uh, Kayla Eloisa says, still waiting on the bowling ball transition. I could not do the bowling ball. That was hard for me. Okay. And you guys think that my like button looks like teeth. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that might be because the like pink background and then white in front, like okay. <laughs> with lips and then teeth, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'll see if I can find something else. Really hard on that, but anyways, I'll see if well, I can, can find you those. just the color of it. Could you make it like blue instead of pink? Probably, probably, yeah, that might help. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I can't do the bowling ball one. I, I looked up, I tried to figure out if someone has done it before. I don't know, I might have to hire someone to do that one for me. Um, Deacon Vito says yes to Kimmy. I don't know exactly what I that think that was be. about the violence in family court. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Dean Vito says it's okay. We can work on it. Yeah, that's why. That's why I bring it to you guys to see which ones you like better. Um, let's see. Dean Vito says I deal with arrears, probably arrears mostly. Oh, and what you do for work? And yeah, people are petty. People are very petty, especially in family law. But one thing I don't see a lot is people asking for money back for what they spent on child support um, and what they spent on um, their student loans. Although you can get those payments back. Deacon Fatal says, you get it. You got it spot on to Kimmy. I don't know exactly what that one's referring to. Yeah, I asked to confirm if that's the colors or what. Oh, the color thing. Okay, yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we got votes going on again. If you would like to vote on the, um, on the transition for the like goal, go ahead and vote. We are currently number one is winning, but I guess I'm going to have to change the volume on how yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> I, I think so. Oh I yeah. Like it's going to be scary. Yeah. And Deke said, that yeah the pink looks like gums <laughs> i didn't even notice that i'll look at it i'll look at it and i'll try to change it i will change it um because i don't want you guys to think that we're splitting teeth when we <laughs> reach our goal and then kayla said i like the graphics eat up them goals bring <laughs> yeah yeah i mean if it's a mouth it makes sense too right <laughs> yeah <laughs> think you fatal agree Oh man. Okay, I don't know where I'm going next. I don't know where I'm going next. And y'all remember, this is a members live stream. So if you would like to join us here on stage, be sure yes. to click the link that is pinned. Um, and or it's pinned in the membership, and then also the memberships tab, and then also on this live stream is pinned above as well. If you want to join, make sure you click the link join. Make sure you have some headphones in to deal with any noise issues and come join us, come chat with us. Um, this Brandy Glanville's, uh, letter is pretty long, Kimmy. I have not read it yet. So have you read it? Um, yes. Okay. Would you feel comfortable giving like a narrative of it or at least jumping around to specific parts that you think is, I think it's important? Yeah, we can do that because, um, yes. Do you want to, do you want me to pull it up or just kind of? I have it pulled up already. Okay. So yeah, I can... all right. So to set the stage, well, give me all... one second. Let me um transition. I don't remember if I did it or not. <laughs> okay, ready. That's how she spelled it, right, Brandy? I think. Okay. So yes. Okay. So Brandy Glanville of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was also on um the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip, which just from every retelling seems to have been a disaster, the girl's trip. Um, so she was accused by Caroline Manzo of on girl's trip essay. Um, of essay. And so um, Caroline Manzo didn't sue Brandy. She sued Bravo. And in this letter, um, Brandy is essentially saying that, um, the Bravo has fomented the, these Bravo lawsuits like to use the word fomented. They fomented mm -hmm. this narrative of her with the essay. 
but in reality she's the one who has been used and abused by nbc and bravo and all of this stuff she says um she does the whole reality tv show reckoning thing it feels a lot like the mcsweeney lawsuit at times mm -hmm. um and she says but actually i'm the one who's been sexually harassed and she said that uh andy cohen sexually harassed her okay um and that he had an abuse of power that was egregious and that um it's insane or i don't remember the wording but that he still has his post but despite his behavior it harkens back to the bad old days um and so this letter it's a pre-litigation letter of her attorney sending them saying these are all the claims we have you used and abused us you or used and abused her you made this narrative worse you fomented it you Brent or Andy Cohen did all these things and therefore you need to like preserve all the evidence because you're probably going to get sued yeah so basically Brandy is saying she's also going to sue Bravo yep which makes sense because um I'm sure in their contract, they have that indemnification clause where if Bravo is sued because of something that the performer, I'm calling them a performer, but the people, the cast members do, Bravo can then come and sue Brandy to basically re get, cost re, yeah, get them reimbursed, the cost reimbursed under the indemnification clause. So it makes sense that Brandy is um, taking her stand right now and that says, hey, I know you're getting sued and I know my name is brought up a lot in it, but if you sue me or don't think you're going to sue me, cause I'll probably sue you first is right. what it looks like. She's writing this letter about. So were there any particularly interesting sections of this that you think we should go over? Um, so I mean, the part where she's talking about her perspective of the real housewives of girl of, or Real Housewives um, road trip is kind mm -hmm. of interesting. Her talking about her like accusations against um, Andy Cohen is kind of interesting. Okay, um, so it looks like about half of the letter is actually just telling them to preserve evidence. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can go through, looks like a lot of words because it's single space, but I think we can go through it and... Um, kind of get an idea of what she is, uh, what do you call it, alleging here. So let's bring it up. Oh, it would be nice if I actually share the screen. That would be helpful. Um, <laughs> here we go. All right. So we have a letter by Brandy Glanville's um, attorneys to the attorneys for NBC Universal, Warner Bros. Discovery, and Shed Media USA. It sent it to their attorneys. Count, this is on behalf of Brandy Glanville, and they go ahead and say this firm, along with Mark Garagos, represents Brandy Glanville, a Bravo mainstay formerly, uh, um, formerly of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Ultimate Girls Trip, in connection with her claims against NBC, Warner Bros., Shed Media, and others. Over the past years, Miss Glanville has been subjected to a vicious media campaign based on false allegations of sexual misconduct, the false narrative which NBC and Jed Media have apparently decided to form foment. I don't like the word foment. Um, arises from the Miss Glanville's experience on Ultimate Girls Trip Morocco. While the experience has been a nightmare for Miss Glanville, it has far from the first it. It is far from the first time Ms. Glanville has been used and abused by NBC, Bravo, Warner Bros., and Shed Media. Indeed, Ms. Glanville has long been taken advantage of by the institutions, which she is indelib indelibly tied personally, professionally, financially, and in the public mind. Her story, one of thousands we have heard in the course of our investigation into the practices of, of the reality television industry is part and parcel of the reality reckoning. So the she fact that, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but the fact that they capitalize reality reckoning, yeah. like it's this whole thing, like, okay. 
It's about to be a whole movement is what yep. they're basically saying here. Um, Miss Glanville has been a Bravo programming staple for over a decade. Since her debut on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Miss Glanville has embodied the Real Housewife. But I don't think she was married at all while she was on the show. I think she may have been divorced and then didn't. Or her husband had like an affair on her, didn't? Yes. Didn't so... But she her husband friend. had an affair on her with Sheena, mm -hmm. who is from Vanderpump Rules. Oops. Sorry. And when Vanderpump Rules um, started, it kind of started with the drama of Brandy and Sheena in that situation. Right. And if you don't know who Sheena is, she's on Vanderpump Rules, like Kimmy just said. And she, her relationship story is just all over the place. Isn't she the one who punched yes. Rachel? Yes. Sheena is a 40 year old woman who punched Raquel. Um, we have to really figure out our anger management skills <laughs> especially past the age of 30 you yeah really shouldn't be punching people yeah. like at all <laughs> and her and Raquel were really good friends too her I think Ariana and Sheena were best friends yeah. but Sheena and Raquel were also really good friends and so she punched her over the um the corn the corn stand um scandal and Sheena Shea, I think she's been married a couple of times. She's married now to oh. a guy that apparently that doesn't pay his child support. Um, that's like a whole storyline on the season nine that I've been watching. Um, right. yeah. And then I think her other husband had um, addiction issues. Addiction issues. I can't remember exactly to what, but he had addiction issues. And so she's trying again now with a man that doesn't pay his child support. So. And now she has a baby, which seems like oh. the only thing that she wanted. And then she also was the affair partner of Brandy Glanville's husband. So is she the best in relationships? Probably not. Probably oh, not. God. But anyways, we kind of went on a little detour there. <laughs> so Brandy Glanville's husband cheated with Sheena, who was on Vanderpump Rules. And Brandy Glanville was actually pretty close to Lisa Vanderpump's, who employs Sheena. Like, isn't that? Like, it's so messy. Well, she later said that she felt like um, Lisa Vanderpump was, like, pushing them together to, like, have the drama and right. all of that kind stuff. Of forcing them together by, why would you hire the woman that cheated with your friend's husband? That's, that is messed up. That's, that's dirty. But I don't even think they're friends anymore now because Brandy was doing some weird stuff to Lisa, too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where was I at? Um, she has been a fan favorite for her hed hedonistic lifestyle. Hedonistic. hedonistic? Okay. Hedonistic mm -hmm. lifestyle, salacious per personal life, and striking physical appearance. Oh, she's just so gorgeous, isn't she? <laughs> striking. <laughs> I know. And just reading striking physical appearance, don't it doesn't make me think you're calling her beautiful. But I know that's what they mean. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't use that language at all. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> over the years, Ms. Glanville has also proved reliable, flexible, and loyal to Bravo. In return, however, Bravo has cast Ms. Glanville off, standing idly by while she faces character assassination and financial ruin. NBC and Jed Media are deliberately refashioning a series of intimate moments between two consenting adults into a Me Too scenario. This is a transparent attempt to cut ties with Miss Glanville in a manner intended to deny her recourse, discredit her, and ward off damaging re revelations that Miss Glanville is uniquely positioned to reveal. So mm -hmm. she's saying that they're trying to get rid of her by the way that they edited the Ultimate Girl Trip, but she has been off of Beverly Hills for a while because of her behavior. Yeah, I would probably lean more to what she said. Why do they keep hiring her knowing that she's going to do some crazy stuff? Yeah. And the little implication of like trying to discredit her to ward off damaging revelations that she could reveal. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, I know secrets, Bravo. Don't mess with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> To be clear, Ms. Glanville has devoted her professional life to Bravo in production of affiliates. The cruel end of a relationship in which Ms. Glanville was invested fully pains her. Oh, oh so she got fired. Can she, we, just really quick, she's devoted her professional life to Bravo. Wasn't she at least in her 40s when she started? She was, yeah, yeah. 
And I said she was 40, or no, I said Sheena was 40 and punching her. Um, let's see. I don't have my phone on me. But yeah, I, I believe she is at least 50 or close to it. Yeah. So no professional career other than Bravo? She was a housewife. She is the a literal housewife. Of yeah. A housewife. Okay. Oh, I didn't know y'all could see what I was doing. She's 51. Oh, she okay. has the plastic surgery too. Everybody's doing that like chic filler. I hate that. But to each their own. Um, here we go. Um, so her whole professional life is to this. She apparently started her career like 12 years ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, the cruel end of a oh, we already got that part. She would have liked nothing more than a to continue her long-standing affiliation with Bravo to entertain existing viewers and attract new ones. Regrettably, NBC and Shed Media have not only elected to terminate the relationship, I wonder why, Brandy, but also to humili- humiliate and ruin her publicly. And doing, she, they didn't file the lawsuit. But I mean, I'm guessing she's saying the way that they edited it made her look bad. Yeah, I don't know. But why would she like nothing more than to continue a relationship where she says she was used and abused so much? Right. And that she was edited bad. Yeah. So okay. it's almost like hire me back or I'm going to sue you. Yeah. Which is strange. If yeah. they're, you know, giving you bad edits. Um, yeah. In doing so, Bravo and Shed Media have left Miss Glanville in dire Strange. Why do these people have no other way to make money? That's the same thing McSweeney was saying, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, a single mother raising... Literally same line. A single yeah. mother raising two boys. Miss Glanville is struggling to support uh, her family and meet her basic needs. The stress caused by this ordeal and the destruction of her reputation has wreaked havoc on her mental health and happiness. Ms. Glanville is suffering from severe stress-induced medical ailment, including severe swelling of her face that has persisted for months and undermined her physical appearance. The course of events is simply intolerable. Are we sure it's not like the injections and the lip fillers and the cheek fillers? Yeah. Her face is swollen and the alcohol, maybe? Maybe, just maybe. It might Perhaps. have something else to do with that. Um, at the outset of the Morocco trip, the production team made it crystal clear to the cast that they were there to make good TV as they had during prior Ultimate Girls Trip seasons and that all of them were expected to conduct themselves accordingly. Like her castmates, Miss Glanville took that as a directive to partake in boozy debauchery. debauchery. Um, that is precisely what they did, Miss Manzo being no exception. The cast spent the day in question drinking alcohol, smoking marijuana, and at the end of the evening, learning how to belly dance. At a party thrown by production, Miss Glanville and Miss Manzo engaged in dirty dancing, flirting, and playful touching. Throughout the night, they shared a couple of kisses. We have heard about a supposed bathroom incident through press leaks, but Shed Media has repeatedly refused to allow Ms. Glanville and her counsel to see footage in to see the footage in question. There is no truth to the, any allegation of improper improper. I cannot say that word impropriety. Being inappropriate, guys. Um, Miss Glanville and Miss Manzo were never alone together that evening. Even when Miss Manzo pulled Glanville into the bathroom to wash their hands, oh, so she's saying she pulled her in there rather than her breaking out the door, really. To wash um, their hands. Yeah, to wash their hands after handling snakes. <laughs> they were accompanied by Alex McCord and Gretchen Rossi. All four women were in the bathroom for no more than two to three minutes and had their microphones on at the time. Although Shed Media has repeatedly refused to provide Ms. Glanville with the audio recordings, Ms. Manzo did not manifest a lack of consent at any point. Later in the night, Ms. Manzo remarked, I've been kissed by women before, but I've never kissed back until now. Ms. Manzo had previously invited the other women to fill her breasts and had been openly discussing her sexuality. There was no indication that Ms. Manzo was distressed after the supposed bathroom incident. Again, she's not being sued. So why is she telling Bravo all of this? Like this letter, I mean, I guess using it against her would be helpful for her because she's only saying positive things 
and letting them know like, hey, this is the argument you should make. Brandy said nothing wrong was going on. Well, because she still had the accusations made against her, even if it wasn't legal. So she still wants since I guess since Bravo's not saying any of these things on her behalf, she's like, then I have to. Yeah, but I mean, the lawsuit just started. Yeah. She's just not even giving them a chance to respond. I mean, this could help them respond, honestly, but still. But strange. working with her, though, would have, yeah. too. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. That's what I expected. That's true, so maybe that is why she's writing the letter, because she doesn't feel like they're going to have her back. Yeah, they're going to say like not. Nah. Yeah. So she's like, you guys are going to, you know, hold me out. Probably say it's not our fault. It, she's, you know, separately liable, basically. Yeah. Um, what happened? Yeah, exactly. Um, what happened next and why remains a shrouded, 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 shrouded. That's a weird word. Shrouded in mystery. The production team barged into Miss Glanville's bedroom in the communal house the following morning and informed her that Miss Manzo was uncomfortable with the previous night's events. Ms. Glanville was directed to participate in a long day of filming in the desert, although she was driven there separately from the other cast members by production. She was also prohibited from drinking alcohol. Afterwards, at approximately 3 a.m., one production assistant took Ms. Glanville to a seedy hotel and sequestered her from the rest of the cast. Ms. Glanville was then moved into a different hotel the following day and kept there for three more days without additional information. She was then flown home a single day before the other cast members. It is apparent, it is apparent some allegation was made. However, neither the nature nor the source of that allegation has been clarified by NBC, Shed Media, or Warner's bro, Warner Bros. Um, we can glean from the press coverage seated by malicious and deliberate leaks that Miss Manzo formally accused Miss Glanville of sexual misconduct and that Miss Glanville was sent home as a result. It bears emphasis that Miss Glanville and Miss Manzo were never alone together in um, anything that happened took place in the presence of the cast and crew. All the events were captured on camera or picked up via microphone. We understand that Shed Media and or Warner Bro has interviewed witnesses, although not all of them, and reviewed the audio recordings and video footage from that night. Notwithstanding, NBC and Shed Media, as well as Miss Manzo, has been feeded a narrative that Miss Glanville engaged in serious sexual misconduct. Indeed, Miss Glanville was falsely informed by the Shed Media slash Warner Bros. investigator that the investigation would be kept strictly confidential. Yet, Miss Manzo has openly discussed the investigation and its purported outcome in public appearances, including on April 7, 2023, episode two, Tease in a Pod with Teddy Mellicamp and Tamara and Tamara Judge. Uh, I guess it's a different show that she appeared on. Those. Because I know that those are both former Real Housewives, so I would imagine that's right. probably like a podcast or something. Mm -hmm. Not, or maybe it's a whole TV show. I would be surprised if they got a whole TV show, but it sounds more like a podcast to me. Yeah, it does sound like a podcast. Um, especially, it's called Two Teas in a Pod, like Two Teas in a Podcast. Um, oh, that's yep. what I'm assuming they're referring to. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Uh, where are we at here? Uh, okay. We have every reason to believe that Miss Manzo with the tactic or express support of Bravo and Shed Media is the source of the early and voluminous press leaks and began immediately upon Miss Glanville's return home. But then why would she then sue the... Oh, let me just read it because I'm, I'm getting confused. Why would she Manzo sue Bravo if Manzo and Bravo are working together? I don't get it. Uh, yet Miss Glanville was admonished to remain entirely silent and to refrain from defending herself. She was further told that assuming her compliance with the directive, she would have the opportunity to work for Shed Media Warner Bros. again, um, Shed Media slash Warner Bros. again on the condition that she completed six months of outpatient therapy with a Warner Bros. affiliate therapist. Miss Glanville did so. It became apparent afterwards, however, that this was a false promise intended to ensure Miss Glanville's silence. All the while, Miss Manzo, Bravo, and Shed Media were feeding a defamatory narrative that destroyed Miss Glanville's reputation, employment prospects, mental health, and financial stability and cause untold harm to Miss Glanville and her family. 
We also understand that NBC and Shed Media are deliberately con- misconstruing an interaction between Ms. Glanville and Sean Loster to bolster its claim of sexual misconduct. Mr. Loster has a history of soliciting and or engaging in sexual relationship with female reality stars under his purview. Ms. Glanville is no exception. Mr. Loster um, has always been transparent about his attraction to Ms. Glanville due to Ms. Glanville's previous affiliation with Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Ms. Glanville and Mr. Loster have a longstanding personal relationship characterized by mutual flirtation and the attempt to recast a single interaction of the nature as sexual harassment by Glanville beg- beggars beggars beliefs beggars belief that what doesn't is- seem right, but it's what it says. Yeah. I don't get that. Um, <laughs> I, I guess it's like beg um, silly. Yeah. Maybe beggars is a word. <laughs> um, worse still, Ms. Glanville herself has been a victim of sexual harassment by Bravo by no other than um, Andy Cohen. In a video sent by Mr. Cohen to Ms. Glanville in 2022, Mr. Cohen appeared obviously inebriated, boasted of his intention to sleep with another Bravo star that night while thinking of her and invited her to watch via FaceTime. Mr. Cohen was Ms. Glanville's boss at the time and exercised complete and total control over her career. This was an extraordinary abuse of power that left Ms. Glanville feeling trapped and disgusted. It is inconceivable, inconceivable that Mr. Cohen remains in his point in his post in spite of this behavior and harkens back to the bad old days of Matt Lawyer and NBC when Matt profits allow her. Um, and NBC when profits were prioritized over people. Okay. So she's saying that, um, what's his name? Andy Cohen did this two years ago and she's just now bringing it up. Did she make a report or is she just trying to make, say, Hey, I'm going to come out and tell all these people, all these things, if you guys don't cut it out. But my question is what, why would, Manzo sue Bravo if Bravo and Manzo are working together. Brandy's trying to make it seem like they're working together. I don't, yeah, I don't, that wasn't a sentence. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me either. Maybe um, in response to the lawsuit or in fear of it or whatever, Yeah, Bravo started like trying to play nice and no, no, we're on your team and that's what they're referring to. Yeah. But the timeline of that wouldn't really line up as right. far as like them saying that it'll be private, but not having an issue with her saying things, but telling the, her like having the false pretenses and such. Oh, I get it. Cause it happened like last year where all the interviews and things were coming out while she was in the therapy. Okay. I guess I, I get that part. Let's yeah. see here. It is not lost on us that NBC and Shed Media and the reality TV industry writ large have come under heavy scrutiny for, among other things, unethical and predatory business practices, mistreatment of cast and crew, and unsafe working conditions. There has been considerable public interest in the reality reckoning a gas roots, or grassroots movement in, in, to improve working condition for cast and crew ensure compliance with the applicable law and establish accountability for bad behavior. It is not hard to understand why NBC and Shed Media, two beleaguered giants of the reality TV world, would feel pressure to act decisively in response to allegations of sexual misconduct by a cast member. This is especially understandable in the wake of the Me Too movement, which transformed the public's understanding of this behavior, its severity, and the consequences that would be borne by those who engage in it. Accusations of sexual misconduct are about as serious as they come and often result in the cancellation of the accused, a social and economic death. Due to the false accusations against her and the media narrative that NBC and Shed Media have allowed to fester, Ms. Glanville is experiencing precisely the social and economic death. The underlying allegations, however, are demonstrably false. Bravo and Shed Media needed a sacrificial lamb and selected Ms. Glanville for this role. To make matters worse, Ms. Glanville has always been nothing less than a loyal soldier for NBC. That is partly because for many years, Bravo has been dangling carrots to keep Ms. Glanville in line. 
As you know, Jonah Krupa filed a defamation lawsuit against Ms. Glanville in 2015, arising from comments Ms. Glanville made on Watch What Happens Live in her professional capacity with Bravo. Although NBC and or production affiliates were plainly responsible for indemnifying Ms. Glanville in connection with the lawsuit, Ms. Glanville was instructed not to pursue the matter um, lest she suffer professional retribution from her then employers. So you listen to, why do you want to keep working for them? <laughs> Ms. Yeah. Glanville expected that her demonstrated loyalty would be rewarded professionally and financially if she bit the bullet. Despite liquidating her savings to cover legal fees and settlement costs, Ms. Glanville never got her carrot. <laughs> carrot. Um, that makes this situation especially galling for Ms. Glanville, who genuinely believes NBC would do her right. The Why? If they didn't, though, like, hey, right. here's an example from many, many years ago where they screwed her over. Right. It's shocking that now they're screwing her over. Like, You're what? continuing to screw me over. What's wrong with you, Bravo? <laughs> yeah. How could I have expected this? It's shocking. <laughs> How could you do this to me? The purpose of this letter is not exhaustive, is not to exhaustively lay out Ms. Glanville's claims. Rest assured, however, that we will do so if needed. These claims would certainly include, but are not limited to, false light, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and interference with Ms. Glanville's perspective economic damage, uh, advantage. There are also a host of illegal provisions in her talent agreement, as we have detailed in previous correspondence to MB. BC. To be explicit, the release and uh, the release and confidentiality provisions, among others, are unlawful and unenforceable. Nothing in her contract will bar these claims or gag Miss Glanville from speaking out. Having concluded that she is being used as a sacrificial lamb, Miss Glanville has authorized this firm to vindicate her legal rights and wage a public reputational war with NBC, Bravo, Warner Bros, Shed Media, and everyone involved in her mistreatment. To avoid what will be undoubtedly be, uh, to avoid what will undoubtedly be a highly public, embarrassing scorch earth feud that promises an undress, uh, promises to undress your reckless disregard for the mental and emotional health of your employees. We suggest we suggest you respond immediately. Okay, oh. and then they put them on notice to preserve a bunch of evidence, but they didn't really and ask any questions with regard with regard to documents tangible things in esi electronically stored information that are created and come into your custody possession and control subsequent to the date of delivery of this a letter potentially relevant evidence is to be preserved you should take all appropriate actions to avoid the destruction of potential relevant um evidence this letter is not intended to set forth your client's entire position uh, our client's entire position regarding this matter. However, nothing contained herein shall constitute a limit on or waiver of our client's claims, right, and defenses. They didn't really ask them to do anything but preserve the evidence, which is kind of like, you know, standard. So they're saying you need to respond to this letter immediately for what? Saying that you will comply? Yeah, I don't know. I had forgotten the part where... Um... It says that Brandy gave her attorneys the right to wage a public reputational war. Like, yeah. that's, I don't know if I skipped that or didn't process it the first time, <laughs> but like a public reputational war, not a legal, like, hey, you're wrong for this, stop it, or whatever. No, like, let's, let's scorched earth with our reputations that's weird to right me. yeah it's not even like oh yeah we are wanting to engage in a legal battle it's no i'm about to smear campaign the mess out of you guys and you bet not try to indemnify me for this lawsuit that's being filed against me when you know that you painted it wrong or you you're yeah. kind of signing with siding with her at this point so yeah i don't know how well that's gonna go over at all so we are at 40 likes with 26 people watching live if you have not hit the like button please do it does help us out in the algorithm and we are approaching our like goal of 50 likes for the live stream so let's see if we can hit our goal i'm gonna go ahead and close out the um the vote the poll for the um what is it the like goal swoop we video number one actually won so 
Um, 59% wants video number one with the explosion. So I will work on the sound effects. Mm -hmm. I don't know if something needs to happen before the explosion for it not to be as startling. Um, or if it's just going to be the, the situation of lowering the volume on it. Um, and then we have 41% saying doing the explosion second to win. So, um, the first graphic is the winner, and I guess we'll be changing the color of the like button as well so that it doesn't look like gums and teeth. So <laughs> shout out to the Bree Hive for giving that feedback because I did not think of that at all, like at all. <laughs> so I appreciate the feedback on that, and I, that should be an easy fix. We have Deacon Fado saying, oh, oh, let me go ahead and bring Bossy into the mix. Let's see here. There you go. I'm like trying not to accidentally press the explosion on you guys because it's in the same area. I like would pass this. out. <laughs> I don't know if lowering the volume is going to help us. Like, should it not be an explosion? I'm wondering. Well, well Smalls is saying fade it in. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay, I'll try. We'll work on it. <laughs> Uh, Deacon Fado says, okay, to me, is this normal for cases like this? The wording, I mean, is that referring to the Brandy Glanville one? Mm -hmm. Um, what part of the warning? Wording. The, what did I say? Warning. <laughs> My brain is like fried eggs. I don't know what's wrong with it at this point. Um, what what wording are we talking about? Oh, I think there's another comment under. Sarah Lee is more of a staple than she is. I mean, she's trying to talk herself up, of course. She's going to be the one suing them. I don't know. This is not even a lawsuit. This is just her a letter saying, if you guys don't stop being mean to me, I'm going to smear your name through the mud and apparently not even file a lawsuit. But they do have the option to file the lawsuit. But she's more concerned about ruining their reputation. Now, I don't know how successful she's going to be in ruining their reputation over them has this massive production company ruining her reputation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tanya D saying none of them seem to be the best at relationships as far as the reality TV shows. Right. And a lot of them are not even married. So why are we calling them the real housewives of anything when a lot of them are not married and a lot of them have jobs. And I thought housewives are supposed to be like stay at home wives that just are in the house. Food. Yeah. Yeah. And working from home, I don't think, I think that's a new phenomenon, but I don't think that was originally included in the definition of housewives. Yeah. Uh, Deacon Fatal says, I'm still trying not to laugh at the last name Vanderpump. <laughs> it is an interesting last name. Deacon Fatal, thank you for the $5 super chat. Definitely appreciate it. Saying, I don't have Beverly Hills money and I'm not Jenny on the block. Too rich for my taste. Jennifer Lopez has enough mess going on in her life right now as well. People are not feeling her. She's like canceling shows because not enough people are buying tickets. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't yeah. she even say something about how like she was making one more album and nobody asked for it, but she wanted to make it or something. So maybe that should have been her first clue. Right. And my thing is like, I haven't heard a song from Jennifer Lopez come out in like forever. And then that movie she just came out with is like a musical. Oh yeah. That she said the like, same thing about that, that no one wanted to participate in that and no one asked for why? it. Why would we? <laughs> I didn't why? even hear about it until I saw it like on TikTok. I was like, this is horrible. Too, too much time and not enough people telling her no, I guess. She do have too much time on her hands. I think she produced it herself, so that tells you a lot. Right. <laughs> she couldn't get a producer. No one wanted it. <laughs> no one asked for this lady. Uh, thank you again, Deacon Fado, for the super chat. Deacon Fado says, in your opinion, how would a judge take this in their decision? This is not in evidence unless someone tries to pull it in. It doesn't really help her it's hearsay of what her lawyers are saying so it's not really going to be helpful to either side small says a single mom who works two jobs who loves her kid and never stops with gentle hands and the heart of a fighter i'm a survivor brandy probably 
<laughs> well, Sweeney said the same thing. McSweeney said the same thing. I'm a single mom and I need to take care of my daughter. And now Bravo's taking the money away from me. Ma'am, get a job. Like, <laughs> there are other sources of employment than being on TV. Yeah. Do they not have any? I, and I mean, like, you don't particularly need skills to be on reality TV. You just have to be available. So are there only skills pretending to be rich? Because obviously they're not rich if they need the show money to make money to take care of their family. Yeah, fake it till you make it. Yeah, that's sad. That's, I think that in itself would ruin the Bravo franchise of Real Housewives because you made us all believe that all of these women are very wealthy and it seems like a lot of them really are not do commit in tax fraud uh we got people um begging Bravo to give them their jobs back after they said that Bravo mistreated them just so they can put food on the table for their kids and I'm like how much is Bravo paying them like are they just overspending every time they receive a Bravo check or is like Bravo paying them scraps so they need the yep. money to keep going i'm i would love to know what okay. they're how much they make from the show deacon fatal says snakes yeah they had um they had like a little snake um what is, what do you call those like handlers snake handlers come and let them hold i forgot even what kind of snake a uh, snake it was but yeah they were holding snakes on the television show Deacon Fiddle says, what in the world is going on in this house? It's a mess. <laughs> Deacon Fiddle says, okay, I think it might be who has the most time. Deacon Fiddle says, the company Bravo might have a lot of time as far as what part of it. Uh, Deacon Fiddle says, in my opinion, I'm so tired of podcasts. They disrespect <laughs> those mics. <laughs> Gotta stop giving people mics. But people probably say that about me, too. Be like, what's this girl in the I, Winnie the Pooh shirt coming they, on to the internet talking about I the wall? How dare they? I'll fight IRL. <laughs> Get the mics away from these people. <laughs> I am these people. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya D says, two ex housewives watching recap in armchair quarterbacking, break down all the breaking news. Teddy Mellencamp and Tamara Judge team up to tell all. Listen each week as they watch and rehash. Tanya D got a whole description of the show. Uh, rehash as only they can. Who knows housewives better than housewives, right? Teddy and Tamara are two in. Two teas in a pot telling all. I think te Teddy was boring. I don't know who Tamara is. I really don't. She is from OC. Yeah, I never watch them. Yeah. <laughs> who wants to watch people from Orange County? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched them before. Um, Teddy Mellencamp is not particularly entertaining i think at one point she tried to become entertaining and it would just came off as disingenuous so yeah and then she left so there's that uh deacon Fado says what's his name is okay is okay name i don't know what you're talking about I stopped watching Bravo after The Walking Dead. However, I am very concerned about the entertainment industry as a whole. I didn't even know Walking Dead was on Bravo. I didn't think it was. I didn't. I thought it was like AMC or something. I thought it was on one of those lower channel numbers too, but I never watched it, so I could not tell you. I could not tell you. Uh, Deacon Vito says, okay, that last word a loyal soldier. Yeah, she was just dumb. Like, you can't be mad at them because you were dumb. Yeah, they're like, yeah, don't indemnify me and bite the bullet. F you, Bravo. I'm not biting any bullets. Like, what could they have ever promised you? And she didn't really tell us what it was that they actually promised her. They were just like, they made it seem like she was going to get a carrot. And if you didn't sue for thousands of dollars because you thought you was going to get a carrot, Brandy, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm thinking she's meaning a literal carrot at this point because she didn't really go into detail of what exactly they told her. Just continued employment, I think. I thought, like, did she think she was going to get her own show? Like, that would make more oh, sense for me. Oh, yeah. Um, but she didn't really even allude to that. Um, let me see. I'm going to go back to it. Um, share my screen. How do I do that? Okay. Um, she said... 
Make matters worse, Miss Glanville has always been nothing less nothing less than loyal soldier to NBC. That is partly because for many years, Bravo has been dangling carrots to keep Glanville in line. As you know, Jonah sued her. Um, although NBC were supposed to indemnify her in connection to the lawsuit, Ms. Glanville was instructed not to pursue the matter lest she would suffer. Okay. Basically she would suffer professional retribution from her then employer. So they wouldn't hire her. So yeah, you're right, Kimmy continued employment. So they didn't even promise her a better show or anything, but that's also not dangling a carrot to say, if you do this, you're like, don't do this or else like, that's not a carrot girl. Yeah. That's like literally a threat. (laughs) Right. That's them outright saying, I know that our contract says we will indemnify you because we should. We're not going to do it and don't try it. And then she's now like, I'm, I, I'm shocked. NBC (laughs) told me that they would like come, come at me if I tried to get indemnification as I'm legally entitled to, but I'm shocked. They're not doing right by me now. What are you talking about? They're basically like, Hey, if you tell on us where you're going to be swimming with the fishes, like they're threatening you. (laughs) Yes. That is a full-on threat, ma'am. And right. she says, Miss Miss Glanville expected that her demonstrated loyalty would be rewarded professionally and financially if she bit the bullet. They did. They kept you on the show. <laughs> right. They they technically kept you on the. They didn't fire you. They still <laughs> put you in bad position. So they, they kind of double screwed you at that point, Brandy. Right. Oh, girl. I'm glad I went back and read it. Because I was like, what did they even offer her? Nothing. They offered not to fire her. And I also wonder, because it says, despite liquidating her um, savings, not mm-hmm. only for legal fees, but a settlement thing. So that means she lost. Yes. And I like, you can't help but wonder if she was indemnified by Bravo, or at least if they helped to pay for her attorneys or something, would she have still been found like liable yeah so they find her liable and then um bravo indemnifies her well she can even prove that it was something covered under what bravo is supposed to indemnify but they're basically like don't waste our time and even file a lawsuit because we're not gonna give you any money with indemnity like if you're initially sued by something that you're supposed to be indemnified for are Mm -hmm. you not able to like before that whole case like comes to a resolution to get indemnity and assistance with it yeah so you can ask to have them join to the lawsuit but even if you don't ask to have them join to the lawsuit basically whatever she pays they just pay her back yeah because i would think once she got sued if she would have said i'm supposed to be indemnified bravo help Mm -hmm. like i would think bravo could have they would have to join them into the lawsuit in order for that to happen okay and then so she says she never got her carrot. And I just don't understand what carrot they promised her. Because all they promised her was that they wouldn't fire her and make her look like a bad person in the press. And they didn't fire her and they didn't make her look like a bad person. I mean, they probably still continue to make her look like a bad person in the press. So. I don't know what carrot either. Because, I mean, it sounds like they threatened her. So that's more of a does. stick than a carrot. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Girl. <laughs> I don't know what she's thinking <laughs> at all. Um, Deacon Fiddle says, okay, another question. Do they really want discover? I guess discovery? I'd assume. I think so. I don't know if that's going to help her, honestly. I really don't. Deacon Fiddle says they would make make her them them look ugly she that's what she wants she wants to make them look bad digging fatal says the word and read like it is like a breakup <laughs> it is like a breakup honey says the fade should be in effect section in canva yeah i know i i saw it earlier but we'll see if it helps. i think it's gonna ruin like my vision okay i'll see i'll see <sighs> <laughs> Deacon Vito says, and I still have no idea who she is. She's the Real Housewives from Beverly Hills and Ultimate Girls Trip. I don't know. Do you? I, I think kind of showed a picture of her, right? Um, I can get the, the pictures are so bad, but here we go. I have it. 
Okay. Oh, it's not big. Oh gosh, they're all small. If you right click it, right click the picture, then uh -huh. open image in new tab. Okay. Well, it should. There she is. Oh, sorry, yeah. that was rude, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I apparently haven't seen a recent picture. She. She has the cheek fillers in for sure. Lips. Lips, yeah. Botox all to hell. Probably some Botox, yeah. She That's... didn't do a good job right there. She probably... No, she's starting to look like the like the over surgery like cat woman. And she's only 51. That's sad. Yeah. And she looks like at least in her 60s. Yeah. What's the point of paying them all of that money if they're going to do that? I've heard some people would rather look over surgery or whatever because it like shows that, well, I have the money. I can do this. I chose this as opposed to like natural and insecure. You choose to look worse? I mean, they don't <laughs> see it as worse, I guess. They see it as like... A type. She looks bad. Like, you cannot tell me that she looks good. Yeah. At 51? That one's not as bad. Yeah. But still, at 51, she looks old. She looks older than my mom. Yeah. Interesting. She looks better here. Let's see. Oh, no. Spoke too soon. Well, she looks a little better there. Yeah. Her face is just a little wrinkly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I'm redoing. I'm reordering the... Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm tired of looking at her. <laughs> okay, I think that... Okay, that should be good, because I just wanted to move the stuff that's in response to that. Like, Okay, you know. Dikin Fatal saying, goodness, Shelly says she's had some work done for sure she did. Um, Dikin Fatal says, what did she do to her face? Oh, yeah. and then... Oh, sorry. Another um, one came in. Okay. Where? No, I just pulled it up. Oh, it says it's another way to brag about having money. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I think it looks worse. But honestly, the way she looks even in this picture that I just pulled up, it seems like she has less work done here. So maybe it is making her look better. I think she looks better here, but I do see that her skin is already wrinkly. Um, Yeah, I don't know if it's just the way that she's being photographed, uh, how the pictures are being taken. Well, and um, when each of them was taken. Uh, yeah, I feel like she's a little younger here because I just was kind of clicking through different photos. Yeah. So I think this is closer to her being 50. And this one's just bad. That one's yeah. horrible. So, yeah. This one doesn't even look like her that much. Oh yeah. yeah, no, that's her. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know what she's supposed to look like because they do all of the plastic surgery already. Yeah. So um, then what were you saying? Oh, I was just to wrap this up, Kintari said um the surgeon needs to lose a medical license. It looks B A D bad. Yeah. So. I I don't know. I'm I'm not a fan of plastic surgery and it shows, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I'm the best person to ask there. Yeah. And especially like when it's not necessary, because I don't think there was anything wrong with her face before. But you yeah, know, she has their own issues, right? Um, Shori says she needs a hit song desperately. Oh, to Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. <laughs> She should just sit down somewhere too, because I think she's not to say she can't perform at 50 plus, but she hasn't been performing. She's not freaking Janet Jackson that continues yeah. to perform, right? You're like trying to make a comeback 20 years later. No, you can't do that. Um, Small says glad she finally <laughs> um she finally knows now as far as Jennifer Lopez. Small says, this has been a long time coming for J-Lo. Time to retire, sis. I thought she was already retired. <laughs> and she's trying to come out of retirement at this point. 
Small says, Brie, you gotta listen to the Reba that Reba song. I don't know if I want to. Uh, Small says, I would argue being a successful reality star is in fact a skill. I couldn't do it. I mean, I guess, but if they're not hiring you, are you mean to tell me you can't get another job? I'm sure being on TV, because even being able to talk on YouTube, even though I screw up half the time, it is a skill that a lot of people cannot do. And it's it's different. You're talking to a freaking camera. I talked to him like in front of a big group of people yesterday, and that was terrifying. Oh. Um, like in person. So yeah, I was actually like shaking there, but on YouTube, I just you know act like a goofball. Um, <laughs> Small says I would argue. Being, oh, okay, I got that one. Vegan Fatal says no, it's not you. Vicky Fiddle says it was AMC, then Bravo did a lot on recaps, I guess, for The Walking Dead. Dean Fiddle says I might watch Goodfellas again. Dean Fiddle says this does sound like some mob stuff. It's, like I said, swimming with the fishes if you try to get us to indemnify you. Like, we don't even want to deal with a lawsuit, so go away. Yeah. We'll let you keep working if you don't sue us, is basically what they said. Tiny D says, glad I don't look like that at 50. That's what I'm saying. Like, I I know a lot of 50-year-olds, and they don't look like that. They look better than this. They look younger than this. Let me say that you look younger than this. And it, like I said, it could be the way that she's being photographed, but... No, I think like when I talked about are they going to do the 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 skin tightening on their lips? I think it's because they put so much stuff in their face and it dissolves or it, you know, sometimes like when you put the implants in, it can shift. I'm like, I don't even want to deal with any of that. You already got enough going on when you're not putting extra stuff in your body. So, yeah. yeah. And I see like I said, I see a lot of 50-year-olds that look younger than this. So, just you know, age gracefully. Let it just happen naturally. Uh, Mind Spasm says, but now you're broke. You can't pawn your cheeks. So why So why do it? As far as her, the plastic surgery? Yeah. <laughs> well, she's saying she can't afford to take care of her kids. I'm like, well, maybe you can afford to take care of your kids if you weren't in the plastic surgeon's office all the time. So my thing is, I think that Bravo is probably paying them good money, but they spend so much money still trying to appear to be rich rather than taking care of the things they actually need to take care of. Because she has an ex-husband. I'm sure she's getting child support. Yeah. So Dickie Fatal says there was nothing wrong with her face. I don't think so. I think she she messed her own self up. Katari says, wait, what happened to with J-Lo? She uh, made a musical movie on what, like Netflix or something? And it's, I haven't watched it, but just from the clips, it looks bad. And then she's also trying to do like a revamp tour where no one's selling out the arenas. But I mean, like she's trying to book Beyonce size arenas. Beyonce has continually, continuously been performing. So why would you think that you can book out the same venues as Beyonce books out? There you go. And Beyonce is also better than your music. So, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> come on now. You're going to come and sing, what, 20-year-old songs to us? And you want us to... We can listen to that on the radio. <laughs> okay? On girl? the oldies channel. And she can't even sing, like, <laughs> acapella or, like, you know, without... Yeah, I'm going to be quiet. Because I can't sing either. So, you know, we're in the same boat. Kintari <laughs> says, in my defense, I live under a rock outside of watching law to work um, ER visits and crocheting. Anyways, well, we are here to bring you the tea. Uh, Small says to Tanya D, that's why they get surgery in the first place. They age like milk in the sun. <laughs> and I'm like, is it just because they're like on TV? No, but more not to say regular people, but more regular people are starting to do the plastic surgery thing. Um, Cheryl Reed says, I think she was in drugs and alcohol for a while. I think she did have an alcohol problem, if I remember correctly. I'm not quite sure yeah. if that's the thing she did. But it wasn't like something she went to like rehab for, right? Um, I'm not sure. I just know that she would drink. She would over drink. And, yeah. 
Uh, Devince Moore says it's the Simon Cowell effect. I don't what's with him. I don't really keep up with him as far as like his appearance. I think he got crazy surgery too. Oh, does he? I don't want to bring up any more people. <laughs> Saidi says, as you get older, you lose muscle tone and skin isn't as firm as so they start to look bad. Yeah, but I I think that the filler makes it look worse. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like if you just don't touch it, then you'll you'll be fine. I think it like exaggerates the other areas, if that makes sense, because it's like your cheeks are young, but your chin is not, you know what I mean? Right. And if you have it and it only lasts for a few months and then it like dissipates it more, then it's going to look even worse by comparison to just a couple months ago. Right. So, it's like you're speeding up the process. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. like calling more attention to it. Yeah. Going from being old to young, old to young every three months. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Small says, age gracefully, lol. They would if they could. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I don't know why the plastic surgery Contari is like screen the sunscreen exists. I don't think it's just the sunscreen, though, it's just aging. Uh, Small says, JLo never could sing live. This is what happens when you have people around you who lie to you. And I mean, she had a good Super Bowl performance. Like, I mean, she could still move, but the singing was really never there. The singing was really never there. She just had some hit songs, but was were the vocals. And if allegedly, if she was actually singing it versus what a lot of people are saying as if that she doesn't actually sing a lot of her songs. So there's that too. Deacon Fatal says, I will yell about how off key J-Lo is. <laughs> JLo is not even a part of the scream, the stream, and she's still being fried. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here we are. No one else joined the live stream. That's sad. Um, but we're having a good time, right? Yeah, yeah we're having a good time. Okay, what else case did I say we we're gonna look at? Oh, let's talk about Hannah Gutierrez Reed because we covered that for quite a bit of time on this channel. So let's have Bossy B bring us in on that. All right. Hannah Gutierrez Reed just finished up her trial. We're waiting for sentencing. We are at 44 likes with 32 people watching live. If you haven't hit the like button, please do. Our like goal for the stream is 50. And maybe I'll surprise you with which um, <laughs> like goal swoop I'm going to use today. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> the fear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like in maybe, the video. You know, maybe I'll surprise you when it like when it comes back to us on screen. I'll just be gone. Like <laughs> we we're gonna unlike it so we don't reach the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hannah Gutierrez Reed convicted of involuntary or vol was it voluntary? No, it was involuntary manslaughter. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, her defense is that she didn't know that it was loaded. And I think that the state made a pretty good point. Like if she knew, if the question was that she knew it was loaded, we would be here for something else. Second degree murder, not involuntary manslaughter, maybe voluntary manslaughter at that point. Right. Um, I don't know. What, what else can we really say about this trial? Um, I mean... I saw recently, I need to look it up. She like has our, her attorney already did an appeal, I think. Yes, yes, they did do the appeal. I haven't looked into it yet. Um, they talked about how they were going to appeal because the jury instructions were not written very well. I know that was one reason for the appeal. Because they used and or. For which part? Um... I don't remember which part, but I remember they were saying that the use of like and or in the jury instructions, like you have to find this and or that they said. was not. Oh, OK. I can't remember exactly what part that would be, but either way it goes, 
I don't think that they're going to really succeed on jury instructions because one, they didn't object to it during the trial that I know of, which you have to preserve your objection and say that the court did something wrong. And if you never object to it, then the court doesn't have the ability to remedy it during the trial. Um, So how could you appeal it? And in addition to that, they talk about how the jury instructions are going to be written. The judge doesn't just throw jury instructions at them and they just all be like, "Okay, we're at the court's whim. No, that's like something they literally argue over. And if he never argued over it again, that's the attorney's fault at that point. So I don't know. what he thinks he, he's doing on appeal. I think that the the jury got it right. I think she is liable um, just because Alec Baldwin is also liable does not take away her liability. The fact that she was a young girl does not take away her liability. She should have been checking the guns and she should have been checking the rounds. Otherwise, what's the point of having her on the set? That's, that's my opinion on Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Did you have anything else you wanted to mention about her, Kimmy? No, um, I mean, I think that with everything that was going on on set and everything, a better or competent defense attorney might have been able to like put reasonable doubt in there. But I think that her own statements in the police interviews, uh, she, I think, was probably the worst witness against herself, and that was made worse only by her own attorney. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, tell him more. <laughs> yeah. Tell him more information. Yeah, he, like, just sat there during the interview that I don't think she should have. It was her second police interview. Mm-hmm. He just sat there and allowed it to happen. I don't think it should have happened in the first place. But he's, if he was going to allow it, or I mean, I guess not allow because he can't control, but if he was going to be there in the first place, do something. Right. And and when I say he was like, tell him more, she would like say something. And he'll be like, oh, and what about this? Yeah. And she will tell more information. I'm like, are you there thinking she's not going to get charged or are right. you there to make sure that she does not self-incriminate? Either way it goes, I hope she's not paying you because you're not making the situation better here. And then volunteering like, oh, I think we have a copy. I'll send that to you. Like, yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Subpoena me, if anything. Subpoena me. All right? right? And I'm not coming here to give you more information. If you think you have enough, then arrest me, and then we'll deal with it at that point. No, my guys, like, I'm trying. And I get it, because it's like, oh, I'm trying to be as helpful as possible. But you, as a defense defense attorney, or I guess he was an attorney of all trades, um, but... Uh, you as a defense attorney, you should not be like, oh, well, Alec is the one that pulled the trigger. So he's the only one that's responsible as a criminal defense attorney. You should know that more than one person can be responsible for something. So um, I think he's not that smart. I mean, I don't disagree. He had bad facts. Um, They should have tried to get her some kind of deal. Like, uh, excuse me. Oh, I'm yawning. Uh oh, someone <laughs> attacked me. Uh, that was like three yawns. Um, she should have tried to get some type of uh, deal like David Hall or something because this yeah. is not going well for her. And what Sarah? Or oh, she just got immunity, huh? Sarah, Sarah. Zachary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, she she should not have done those interviews. Those were not good for her. Let's see what the chat has to say about Hannah. All right, we got Cheryl Reed says he's asking for a new trial and to let her out of jail. Oh, you mean after you were so busy during the month of April and May? (laughs) Now you're trying to get your client out of jail? Now, after the hearing? After reading off his phone? Hold on, wait a minute. Let me pull up this code section and tell you why you should let my client out of jail. Because she's a good girl. (laughs) Did you know she's only 20, whatever? 26 now. Yeah. She'll never do it again. You're darn right, because she's not going to work in the industry again. Defense Moore says, I, or Defense, why can I not talk today? Defense, Defense Moore. It sounds like I'm saying defense. 
but I'm not. I don't think I am. Anyways, I think she had Lex Luthor for a lawyer and he only cared about himself. Who's Lex Luthor? Um, isn't that like Superman bad guy? I don't know. Let me see. I gotta tell me y'all references. Yep, oh, wait. It's, it's from DC. Well, then that's not super. It's oh, it is Superman. Super okay, okay. It's a super villain. I don't know much about him, so I can't really make a, a comment on that one. <laughs> um. Well, he's bald. Oh. He's a bald bad guy. Yeah, I'm seeing his picture. This is Baldi's friend. Yeah. So we, we, our nickname lawyer guy, Baldi. So this is Lex Luthor in the movie. So similar. Yeah, Lex Luthor doesn't have the same bald shine, but yeah, he's not as shiny. He's definitely dull compared yeah. to Mr. Bowles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he also stepped up as first chair because she had a different attorney that tried to get relieved, right? And the court did not relieve him, but made him sit in the back of the courtroom. I think he was always first, first. or at least co. Okay. Yeah, because I remember um, in the pre-trial motion hearing, like the week before, he was there a lot and Sleepy Lawyer was sleepy during that too, so. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I thought he was second and then he took over um, when the other guy sat in the back of the courtroom. But maybe he was always the first one. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Deacon Vito says, as a former armor, there is no way I would let Alex push me around when it was my job. And that's what a lot of people said. And even what the yeah. professional armors that testified said, too. And that makes sense to me. What's the point of having you on the set if you're going to let people boss you around when it comes to safety of guns? Right. So I agree with that. Cheryl Reed says people have to learn not to speak without a lawyer. Keep your mouth shut. Well, she shouldn't have spoke with her lawyer because her lawyer is dumb too. <laughs> right? <laughs> like she did it both ways. She spoke without a lawyer. She spoke with a lawyer. Neither of them were good. No, both no, a disaster. No. I think the second one was actually worse. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think you're right. <laughs> well, the one with the lawyer was actually she, worse. Yeah. Especially because the second one was after they already knew that Helena Hutchins had passed away. Right. And so the way that she came into it with her attitude and them cracking jokes, and I'm pretty sure that's the one where she made a comment too about how when she had to do props and also armor, she was like, oh, well, I guess I'll just have to kick ass in here too. And it's like, how are you going to say that? Yeah. With all that's happened. Yeah. And the woman has passed away and you're like coming in cocky about, oh, I guess I'll have to kick ass there too. Maybe kick ass in just one of them. Right. And we wouldn't have been here. Exactly. Pay attention to what you have going on and just what she's saying and the interviews and the attorney not really helping her out. I just. And I, say. I had higher hopes from the opening statements. Because prosecution came on and then the defense came on and it seemed like dismantled a lot of what they said and completely mm -hmm. contradicted it. But those points, it turns out, were just like points he wished existed in their case. Well, yeah, like, he just never tied it together. Well, no, because like he said that um, Sarah Zachary threw bullets away or whatever. But then it turns out Hannah's the one who unloaded Alec Baldwin's gun. Right. And like all of these different things, he really like just discredited himself in himself. trying to discredit mm -hmm. them. It was such a disaster. Right. Cause Sarah Zachary did throw away bullets, but not from the gun in question. So right. how does that help you, sir? But we yeah. do have Hannah unloading the gun. So, you know, you're right. And then even there was another point I wanted to make as far as something about not speaking. Oh, the point that where they tried to meet, make where she was like, she didn't know if she should talk to a lawyer. So they asked the detective corporal, um, why did you keep questioning her? Um, because she didn't ask for a lawyer. But you saw that she was confused on whether she needed a lawyer or not. You guys basically like convinced her that she didn't need a lawyer. Um 
that's not their fault that she decided that she was going to answer questions. And the detective made it very clear, like, okay, well, if you don't want to answer any more questions, you can stop at any time you want. And she didn't. She just kept answering questions. So I don't know what that line of questioning was. That was not a good line of questioning. Yeah. Um, Small says, didn't know there was such a thing as attorney of all trades. He is. The, they call them door lawyers. You take whatever walk through the door. So there's that. We have Carolyn Lower saying they offered her a deal. Um, do you remember what the deal was? Because I don't. I don't remember what the deal was, but I think the reason that they turned it down was because she would have had to say where the bullets came from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. I do remember that. And then we do have Kentari in the back. Let me know when you are you are ready by just giving me a thumbs up. Okay, I will add you to the stage. Welcome, Kentari, a new Hello. member of the channel. Join Hello. us. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, how are you today? Uh, not I'm doing pretty well after the visit to the hospital, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're getting a little bit of a um, weird noise from your microphone. So let me see if it has oh. something to do with the volume, actually. Is that um, better? Uh, it's a little staticky. So let me just see if I could just... Um, okay, try that. And now? Yeah, that's a little better. Oh, good. Okay, it's it's a little staticky still, but it's better than what it was uh, beginning. But okay, you say you're doing good. Did you want to make a comment on this case before we jump further into the comments? I just found it strange because I I lived in the U.S. as a child, and then I moved back to Chile where my family is. And so whenever there is like gun related accidents, I'm like caught of war because guns are heavily regulated here. And I was like, wait, how? Mm hmm. And then, and then I started to process it, and I was like, but why were they so lax? And I would mention it to my parents, and my parents were like, Americans. Whenever you question it, Americans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, I thought they were pretty lax on the charges, though, because it was someone died. That's all I could think about. Was someone died because she didn't do her job, and it doesn't matter how young or old she is. Her duty was to keep an eye on the guns. Right. And that, that's what I said a lot during the trial as well, where they where they were like, oh, well, she shouldn't get the full, what, 18 months that she's facing. I'm like, I think that's a drop in the bucket uh, versus what uh, Helena Hitchens had to go through and losing her life earlier than she really should have. So um, I don't. I think that she was supposed to be convicted, and I think if she gets 18 months, then it'll be well-deserved, honestly. But I know some yeah. people in the chat don't agree with that, so. I mean, like, like we're, Tila is pretty, like, strict, so even if it wasn't voluntary manslaughter, she would be looking like, like, 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. And, like, 18 months for me was, like, someone died and just getting 18 months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just because it's not, um, she didn't purposely do it, um, and that's just what the statute is for them. So hopefully, uh, we'll see what the sentencing is, or I think actually the sentencing will um, pause as the appeal goes on, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? I believe so. was the time we, we credit that, or would she get uh, compensation for time served? Um, yeah, so if they keep her in jail and they appeal, then yeah, she'll get time served. But if they don't, if they appeal, I don't remember if, no, you, you would still get sentenced. There's plenty of people on appeal that still get, well, but it's a, an appeal after trial. I really don't know off the top of my head because I don't practice criminal law. So I don't have a direct answer. Kimmy, do you happen to know? Um... It, I mean, I think that in some jurisdictions they can make it where, um, like, you're released pending the appeal. And so, in a way, if that happens, because I think that, I think you're right, Kentari, that that's what they said. They want her to be released and to appeal and get a new trial. So, um, I don't think an appeal necessarily, like, automatically, in every case, like, 
stops the sentence saying, but I, I think that's what they are trying for and want to happen now. Mm. He has, it sucks that she isn't like, she, she, like, I didn't like how the prosecutor was like, and she goes, and then her defense lawyer was just, I'm pretty sure my dog would be a, pre, a better defense lawyer. <laughs> and she's yeah. a little small white bundle of like murderous or just towards pigeons. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people and even maybe some animals could have done better than bulls on this um, case. But honestly, I feel like he also had bad facts, but he was just too gung ho about his bad facts of what. Um, well, and, and I'm almost wondering, which I think they will continue with the appeal, um, even after if they say that she gets no time in jail because then she would still be a felon, right? So I'm thinking they would still continue on with the appeal because she's going to want to continue to work in this area of <laughs> employment, which she probably shouldn't want to do that anymore, but I wouldn't she be surprised if she still be hired. Mm-hmm. I, like, like, I, I'm like, like, I'm pretty sure, like, even my baby cousin who's, like, nine months old would be better than her because at the very least she like no, feels like possessive of her things so she wouldn't even chair <laughs> right like d- do something right <laughs> so the list of of beings i guess that would do better your dog would have done a better job as the defense attorney and your nine-month-old cousin would have done a better job as the armorer <laughs> what a sad situation that is. I don't disagree, though. Yeah, I, I agree as well. And then, Kimmy, you were getting ready to say something about the actual sentencing of, of whether they will appeal, continue to appeal, and whether she's going to still get a job in the, the armorer business. Oh, yeah. Um, well, because I wonder, I know that if you're a convicted felon, you're not supposed to own guns. I don't. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. Is that's that the attorney? <laughs> that's the attorney. Okay. Yes. Behold. Oh, Lily. Hi, Lily. Oh, she can't hear me, Mira. but I love her so much. Mira. She's oh, my oh, adorable. Yeah. Um, Lily would have done a better job for sure. <laughs> but um, because if she can't um own a gun then does that also extend to working with guns or just like because if you're not supposed to own a gun you shouldn't be allowed to be near guns how do you work around that like would the guns belong to a second armorer yeah and then again who wants to have someone who fell in her job so badly someone died someone else got shot i mean for what there was also an accidental accidental firing Yeah. yeah That was and with Sarah so, Zachary, yeah. And so um, I, the thing about the guns after um, conviction for felons, it's not necessarily whether they can own a gun. And we know a lot of gangsters and thugs that don't own their gun legally. They have a gun. They're possessing it. So th- felons cannot possess a firearm. So that's holding it, that's using it, anything. So she wouldn't be able to still do the job with the Oh, community. yeah. They can't, can't possess, possess, it's yeah. not own. Mm-hmm. You cannot possess a gun. Oh, okay. But if you're in the armor, shouldn't the guns be in your possession or throw them be under your name? They would be How in your it? possession. Right, so I... How you would have it work? To it. It, it wouldn't. I messed up and thought that felons can't own a gun, but if they can't possess a gun then it wouldn't work at all. Yeah. So the only way I see it working is if she has like a very realistic looking collection of BB guns. And even then I wouldn't trust her with that. Well, even I've... Even an Nerf gun. You can't kill someone with a Nerf gun, I think. Well, I've even seen sometimes where you're not supposed to own or possess, I don't remember what the verbiage was, anything that looks like, yeah. So, no. But, I mean, she shouldn't be in this industry anymore. And I would like to think that she wouldn't be hired in it ever again. But seeing what's been going on with the Nickelodeon and stuff like that and how, you know, and people 
were still hired even after convictions for yeah. stuff. It's someone's I mean, still gonna let her do it. I mean, she wasn't even licensed for this movie, so right. I mean, she was licensed through someone else, but still, she wasn't even licensed herself. She didn't really have the experience, so there's going to be someone trying to get some leap, some cheap um, business done. I'm, I would not be surprised with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Here we have Small saying, oh, is I just started crocheting. I suck talking to Kentari. Yeah, I moved the Kentari um, chats to the top. So, <laughs> okay. I'm looking. And then Tanya D says, man, she is crocheting without looking. Mad skills to Kentari. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Reed says, hi to Kentari. A small hi. says, <laughs> yep, your parents are right. That's the real issue. Our gun laws are trash. They're too lax, basically, is what Kentari said earlier. Yeah. So I, I would agree so with that as well. Why we moved away, my there was like a shooting like half a block away from the school I was attending in New York. And my mom was like, because it was my dad, my sister and I, and my mom was in Tula with my two baby siblings. Like Bo mm -hmm. was like eight, no, was like five. Van was like two. And my mom was like, no, 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 you're coming back. We're not moving, we're not moving. I'm not risking it. Mm -hmm. Now every time there's a mess treating, my mom's like, aren't you happy we didn't go through with the choice? Look at what could happen. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Cheryl Reed was saying she turned down a deal as far as Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Kimmy talked about that earlier because she would have had to say where the bullets came from. And that could potentially implicate her dad, right? Um, and she didn't want to get her dad in trouble. But I mean, like taking... The fault for a grown man. But how would it implicate anybody else? Like, it doesn't matter where she got the bullets from if she brought them on set. The thing would be, she wouldn't be going to jail. And she wouldn't be a convicted felon. She would, might have a misdemeanor and she could continue with a job. But if she tells who had the bullets, a supplier could still be liable as well. Although she is also supposed to be checking the guns, she would also she would already have a deal done to where they couldn't then try to convict her again. No. So whether they could have stuck it with the, the supplier or not, it would have relieved her responsibility or not relieved her responsibility. She would have got a deal like David Hall. Yeah, yeah, it, it would have made it better for her, although maybe they may have brought claims against her or may have brought uh, um, charges against her dad. But, I mean, they may not have been able to convict him because he could say, I didn't know my daughter was going to take those bullets. So uh, Note to self, it's asking what am I making. So, uh, Tua has, we're, we are officially in autumn, and between late December to March, we have summer, which is wildfire season. And this year, like two of our regions were heavily impacted and around like I'm not sure if 50,000 people lost their homes or not, but it was the, the most impoverished like um, forest sections. And something I do every year is that there is campaigns to need donation squares. You need like 20 by 20 granite squares and you join them and you make blankets. And mm -hmm. I tend to work on like granny squares in between projects so that uh, they can be dropped off and then I get to see the photos of like we've made like this year it's been 35 blankets so far that uh, my granny squares have been turned into and I'm hoping to maybe hit 50 before I start to work on before I open commissions again because winter is going to be hard. <laughs> Okay, that's nice. Yeah. You are so talented. Those colors are so gorgeous. Like, that's <laughs> such a cool thing to be doing and contributing to. I love everything about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like knitting. I like crochet. It's yeah, like I think you're doing a good job. Uh, Deacon Fiddle says, I'm glad I'm not the only one who gets sleepy early. Are you talking about my yawning? Yeah. Uh, Carol, I don't, I've been so tired lately. Um, but yeah, Carolyn Lower says they offered her a deal. Yeah, we talked about the deal. Uh, Devince Moore says agree 100% to Deacon Fatal. If Baldwin had problem, 
with how I was doing my job, he can just fire me, but I would never cave in. Exactly. He could have just fired her. They wouldn't have been able to have guns, but knowing that set, they probably would have proceeded on even without her. They probably would have just made Sarah Zachary do it. She was an armorer on a different set before. So um, at least, like we talked about this before on this channel, at least Hannah would not have been liable. If she's saying they were doing so many bad things, they could have walked out just like those camera people walked out that day. Or she could have walked out just like they did. Yeah, lock them up. Shut up. <laughs> No, to, yeah no to self says you two are great together funny smart and beautiful ladies thank you very much <laughs> definitely appreciate that deacon fatal says wait props and armorer yes hannah gutierrez said that she was doing both props and armorer but on the particular day when she lost her life she was only doing armorer duties so they tried to keep they tried to keep saying oh she had to do multiple jobs at once but in, on that particular day, she was not doing more than one job at once. Um, Deacon Fatal says, ma'am, please. Deacon Fatal says, I don't play with firearm stuff at all. Yeah, I don't. I always say like, oh, I should get a gun, but I'm so afraid of it. I'm like, I would probably hurt myself. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> um, Carolyn, we own guns, but we own hunting guns because, uh, like, it's long story is my mom's from the north of the country of Tula, which is desert. My dad's from the south bar, which is rainy season, like 300 days of the year. Mm -hmm. And whenever we head down south, we have to do like the house tours because uh, family state is family house, so to speak, is like in the middle of nowhere. So we have wild pigs, we have um, hares, we have to basically like do old, old, old and nasty fun stuff of like, okay, the pigs ate the crops. We have to hunt the pigs. And it's like 50 people versus one pig. And usually someone ends up in the hospital because they oh. got struck by the pig. Oh, wow. The pigs are that aggressive. Yeah. Oh. Hogs are, are nasty. Yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, let's see. Carolyn Laura says she had to name who gave her the bullets. Yep, that's what she would have had to do if she were to get a deal. I would have done it. You're only 24 years old. Your dad is like, what, 40, 50? 80? He can go to jail. Isn't he supposed to be in his 80s? The is dad? I don't, I don't know how old he, he is. He is old, I think. All I know is he's older than her, and he could have took one for the team. Mm. <laughs> Kimmy, <laughs> what is the mm about? You don't agree that he should have took one for the team? He's 81. Oh, yeah, for sure. For oh sure God. he could have took one for the team. I mean, for an 81-year-old to go to prison. Life. He lived his life. I know, but I recently saw, and I don't know the validity of this, that for every year a person spends in prison, it like takes two years off their expected life expectancy. Mm -hmm. It depends uh, on the prison system, but like here in Tula is like per one year served, they lose five to ten years off their lifespan from how rough it is. But then again, oh. we do have like mateta fights and knife fights, so um, it can be different for the U.S., yeah, so I saw those stats for the U.S. And so, I mean, ultimately, I mean, I guess since I don't know where the bullets came from, like if he sent those and said, these are this, and mm -hmm. she just believed him, like, then yeah, he should have maybe had some culpability for that. Yeah. But, but oh, go ahead. Well, but just in general, like, the idea of an 81 year old man, like if an 81 year old man serves 18 months in prison, who knows? That could be like a death in prison sentence. But so do the U.S. not apply like the health rates pro like thing. Let's the what? To, like if they're if they're like over 70, they usually argue for like um oh prison prison um it's like when you serve the time at home. And you're not supposed to leave. I don't think like, that that's... arrest. No, yeah, I don't think they would. They can do house arrest, but I don't think they would do that. But the thing about it, too, she would not be going to jail. She complained about her age being 24, blah, blah, blah. Her dad, I really don't think they would have been able to convict him either. So 
let's say they did convict him. He goes to jail. Maybe it takes time time off of his life. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not trying to be morbid and I'm not trying to be mean, but he's already 81. You know, <laughs> he's lived a pretty decent life and he's probably not doing armor or duties. I would hope he's not. Well, it sounds like he was still doing armor or duties, but he doesn't need to really be doing any more armor or duties. He could, should be retired in my opinion. Um, if he got, if he got convicted and then if he, I don't think they would have been able to convict him though, because even if he did give the bullets to Hannah, it would have had to be foreseeable that she would then not do her job and check the bullets. Yeah. When and we would, they would have to argue. Oh well, she was so inex- inexperienced. Why would you think she would check the bullets? I don't think that would have held out much. I'm thinking he probably would have got off title? with a food deal as well. So, but title. we don't know because she didn't Arthur. tell. What was that? But then again, um, it's the job title. Like she's the armorer. Even no matter where you get the, the bullets from, you have to check them one by one. It's like one plus one is two. And also to Smalls, who's saying, um, here I am weeks later, still suck. I keep quitting because I don't like not being good stuff. Like, I didn't start out being good. Like, my first STEM projects died in a fire because I burnt them. I hated them so much. But you have to start with, like, small projects. Like, start doing granny squares. Granny squares are pretty easy. And you can always, like, turn them into blankets or turn them into hankies. Or turn them into, later on, a cardigan. Or, like, um... See other work for it, even a shirt. Like start with small squares, and then you can make it work. But yeah, like this is like I've been crouching since I was oh, I'm 29, so 20 years. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, and like, um, think. yeah, yeah. Um, so the where where were we at? About the, yeah, I don't think he would have ended up going to jail. I think he would have also, I don't think they would have been able to get that foreseeability. And honestly, I think the person that they really want in jail is Alex. So her taking a plea deal, she would have been able to testify against him. I don't think it would would have really affected her father that much. But again, sounds bad. I know if my dad had something to do with something that led me to being in trouble, he would take that time over me. So I don't know. That's just being a protective parent, right? Um, but I, I honestly don't think they would have been able to convict him. Because look at how much evidence they had to have against Hannah. Her playing around with the gun, her not paying attention, her letting people boss her around versus him handing her a box one time and he taught her everything that she knew. So she should be able to check the bullets he should have had a you know a reasonable expectation that she was going to do her job so i i just didn't i don't see him going to trial if she were to tell on her dad Hmm. so let's see and then maybe it would have actually left led to seth kinney because remember they were shooting together when those boxes were made so um it may have led to him at that point uh, Deacon Fatal says I could see time served I think she's going to get time served I don't think she's going to get the 18 months because uh, I think who they really want is Alec I think that's who they really want Defense Moore says I agree she is accountable I just think if she hadn't been so cocky and questioning the jury might have been a little bit more sympathetic I can agree with that too she came off as if it was just a big old joke right yeah, yeah. she was the worst witness <laughs> right. Deacon Fatal says, I would make a think where she won't be able to work on set until she's remedial and remedial training. She's not going to be able to work and with guns, at least, because she's a convicted felon, unless, like I said, they appeal it. So either way it goes, she's not going to be working with guns. She could, she could still do props. <laughs> If anybody wants to hire her anymore. Uh, Tanya D says he didn't tie his points together and was all over the place. We're talking about Baldy Bowles. Um, (laughs) No, he did not tie his points together. And like Kimmy mentioned earlier, a lot of his points were kind of like moot because it didn't really tie into exactly what they needed to argue. 
Team Fatal is saying hi to the puppy. That's now gone. Uh, Tanya D says, so I nominate Katari for MVB for today. Yes. Hey, you know, yes, we're running up to, we'll see at the end of the stream. I'm thinking it's going to happen. Note to self says, how cute is Lily? Talking about the dog. Deacon Fatal says, yes, it would. I don't know exactly what you're referring to there. Note to self says, does California have the same gun laws as New Mexico? I don't know. I don't deal with guns. And I'm also not a criminal attorney, so I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> and expect and especially which gun laws are you talking about? Because I'm sure they have similar ones, but I don't know if they're all the same. Uh, Cheryl Reed says, "I doubt she'll ever be an armor again. No way Hollywood will hire her. I mean, if Alec Baldwin is doing another cheap project, I wouldn't be surprised. Or she just changes her name, which she obviously did for this trial partially. Yeah." Mm -hmm. uh, Tiny D says Time for Hannah to learn a new skill Maybe she can go on reality TV Actually <laughs> That's pretty hilarious Actually though about changing her name for the trial uh -huh. um, Apparently Her legal name is Hannah Gutierrez mm -hmm. And so that's why it was like That in the trial And prosecution fought and argued that the only reason she tried to file under Hannah Gutierrez Reed and wants to be known that way or whatever is to have the connection to the right. famous father. Right. Exactly. I think we talked about that on the channel that somehow that was going to help her. Right. I think the fact, the facts that they brought up about her being related to him, um, I think hurt her more than helped her. Cause you're talking about, you've been on set since you were like a child and you've been working with guns since you were a child, but for whatever reason, you couldn't properly check the guns as an armorer. So um, your job. yeah. 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 So, I don't even think the connection actually helped her. Uh, Zoe B says Hannah didn't own guns used on the rest set. They were provided by Russ production by pdq prop house yes um she didn't own the guns but we're talking about whether she can possess the guns in order to do more armor or duties like you just said she didn't actually own those guns either but she was in possession of them mm -hmm. um zoe v says pdq prop house was seth yes uh small says a i wouldn't <laughs> snitch on my own my, on my mom either i probably would have turned down the deal too I don't know. I think my dad would have voluntarily taken the charge for me because it's like, I'm only 24. Remember that was their whole thing. <laughs> that was their whole thing. Uh, Deacon Fatal says that is so cool. A note to self says beautiful. And thank you for sharing that story. Very sweet. Talking about Kentari's story about the knitting. Uh, Tanya D says those were my high school colors. Um, the colors that she's knitting. Uh, Cheryl Reed says he's over 70. Uh, Tanya D says Bria is cold. I mean, I know it sounds dark. I know it sounds dark. But, I mean, 80, he's, you know, he's lived a little bit of life. If not a lot. That's a long life. Like, That's come a long on. Life. That is a long life. Yeah. Not trying to kill him off or anything. But, you know. I think I don't think he would have gone to jail to tell you the truth. I don't think they would have had enough evidence to convict him of like the amount of evidence that Hannah had with actually being on set versus handing it off to his daughter who was supposed to be checking them. Mm -hmm. Um, and he could have said, I didn't give her those boxes, I, she just took them. Yeah, easy explanation. He probably knows how to lie a little better too because of his age. So there's that. Uh, Kayla Eloisa says the crochet in makes me want to get my crochet gear out. Um, LOL. I make baby hats. Oh, cute. Try it. Try it. Try it. Cute. <laughs> Zoe V says Hannah's lawyer should have focused on who supplied ammo dur uh, more during the defense because Seth brought guns and blanks to Sarah for the rest set that came from set where Hannah's dad worked to create doubt. Um... I don't know if it would have helped. I honestly don't know if it would have helped to focus on who brought the um, bullets to set because she was responsible for checking them. And y'all saw me yelling the whole stream about that or the whole case about that. But um, then I also a question. Are not lawyers supposed to know how to make like fake bullets? 
I don't think there's a, I mean, I'm sure they do. I don't know if that's, a, well, they don't have any requirements. That's the first issue that was a part of the issue and the case. But she did want to make the fake bullets because she was asking for the inertia puller. I don't know if you guys remember that, but she was asking to be able to empty the live rounds, which kind of indicates that she probably knew there were live rounds on the set. But no one made that argument that I remember of. Tanya D said we're at 50 likes. I'm showing 49 likes. So we need one more like to hit the, um, on my end, it's showing 49. So we need oh. one more like to hit the like goal. So if you haven't hit the like button, oh, there we go. We just made our 50 likes. Let's see what, um, <laughs> I want to use the less intense one. Um, here we go. I think. Mean Okay. I just I just did it right over Kimmy. She's like, oh no, wait. <laughs> well, I said I said it's still like startling a little bit, but maybe I'm starting to get immune to it because that would like it happened, it came up, like I was okay. Like I'm fine. Like, that was hilarious. <laughs> She's like, no wait. <laughs> I listen. I the fifty like <laughs> goal for the stream. Listen, I was I was good that time. I'm glad that you did the second one. I was like, I don't want to startle anyone too bad. Because I think that the first one, if we had said okay, beware, like we're about to do the whatever and warned people that it might have been okay. But yeah, if. You had said, I'm going to do the first one and then just done it out of nowhere. I probably, like, my soul would have left my body. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, it scared me earlier. So I, I don't want to do that to anyone else. <laughs> and I yeah. knew what was going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. Jory says props. I don't know exactly what year. Uh, oh, that that will be her job. Yeah. <laughs> Dicky Fiddler says props. Isn't that a bad job? That's what I'm saying. She'll still be in the music, uh, the movie industry, which is what she went to um, school for. Small says, well, I don't care about their age or promises from the DA. I'm not snitching on my parents as much as I don't want to go to prison. Nothing can make me throw my parents under the bus. Nothing. <laughs> I don't know, I'll probably tell all my parents. <laughs> because let's be honest, my parents would tell on me. Like if I did something all bad, right. would my parents tell them? Yeah. If I killed someone, my parents would tell on me. Would yours not? Um yes. well, only my dad's still alive. So I oh, don't I'm know sorry. if he would. Um my siblings, I think. I don't think my siblings would tell on me and I wouldn't tell on my siblings, but I've asked, like I asked my best friend if she would tell on me or hide me or whatever. And she sent me so many gifs of different people being taken away by the police. So I know she would. <laughs> <laughs> She's no, not catching a like, charge for you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> my parents, like, just, they're both lawyers, like oh. different specialties specialties um, my dad was got his phd my mom has a master's apart from that he has a lot here in chile is like a, a bit more different but like my parents are like whenever something happens my mom's like you're breaking this and this and this and if you were my child i would be like tossing you out but even then like sometimes i'm like do i bite your arm i was like don't be stupid no my dad no my dad's my dad's a bit so he's like sweetie I don't think that's a good idea. Or then he goes like when he gets pissed, it's like full name. He was like Marina Alejandra Onokayaga. Why are you doing this? Like I raised you to be better. Like when I started to drink when I was underage, like I need get like yeah. You know, all that. All I don't like, think my parents will turn me in. He must not tell so, turn her friends, her siblings in. Uh oh, oh, we lost her. Uh -oh. We lost her. Yeah, um, no, I mean. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I just, well, because I, I mean, I just assume, like, I don't know. I wouldn't. My thing, if it's, like, a small, like, this 18 months, come on now. I, whatever, maybe I'm a dick, but I would. 
Maybe I'm maybe I am a meanie Bobini, but I'm not taking your charge. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I would just be like, you shut up, I'll shut up, we're quiet. Well, yeah, no, I wouldn't actively go and snitch, yeah, no. no. Yeah. But if it's like, it's a situation where it's me or you, I mean, it's going to be you. It's it's not going to be me. Um, and that may be bad. That may be a bad person. But either way it goes, my people don't do illegal things. So hopefully I'll never have to um, be in that situation. Um, Small says, so if her option was taking the deal by throwing her dad under the bus or going to trial, she made the right decision. Now she's going to jail. So if that's the right decision, that's the right decision for her. Uh, Small says, oh, Hollywood would hire her again, laughing my A off. That's what I said. They hired her to begin with when they shouldn't have. Uh, Small says, you overestimate Hollywood. And Small says, never underestimate ho Hollywood nepotism. They're going to say, oh, it was an accident. She was only 24. But like I said, she already has the felony charge, which makes me believe that's why she's appealing so that she can go back into the industry. Cheryl Reed says insurance will never cover her. That's another thing that you have to consider. But they kept saying that she was covered under Seth Kinney's. And I'm wondering if her name is actually like listed on the insurance policy or just any employee that worked for him is listed on the insurance policy, n not necessarily by name, but just because they work for him. I wonder. By extension. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Deacon Fatal says Alec Baldwin is starting to remind me of the film director that made The Room. And I'm not familiar with that. Uh, Deacon it's Fatal like a cult classic. It's pretty. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> Deacon Fatal says if you have never seen The Room, the director liked butts. That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, Small says, yeah, every hypothetical I can think of, it wouldn't apply because I wouldn't be in her position to begin with. I wouldn't be high at work or scared to do my job. What's right? I'm 10 toes down every time. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That's what I was like. My people don't do illegal things, so I don't think I would be in that, you know, position. But at the same time, it's if it's if I all I have to do is tell on you a little bit. I would talk to you about it first, but I'm probably going to tell. Probably going to tell. I'll tell you that I'm telling before I tell, <laughs> but I'm telling. <laughs> they be like, they're going to offer me a deal and I can get off, but they said I have to give you up. Or, or she could lie. She could have lied, but obviously she's not that good at lying. But either way, like I said, somebody died. So I don't think it's bad that she, that she, um, is convicted. convicted. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I don't even think they could have stretched it all the way to Seth Kenny or uh, the, maybe make them lose their license. But I mean, like at 81, does he still really want to work? Well, 81 is the father, not Seth Kenny. Well, I'm talking about the father. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe he would have pointed it to Seth Kenny and then maybe he would have got convicted because he was the props person. So he's a little bit closer connected, but her taking bullets from her dad's garage. I don't think that's close enough of a connection. And maybe yeah. they were trying to get Seth Kenny and they didn't expect that it will be her dad. So they probably thought, Oh, this is an easy deal for her to take because she's going to give up Seth Kenny. To they us. tried pointing to Seth Kenny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She should have said she got it from Seth Kenny. <laughs> And they, I'm sure the prosecution would have made that work. Um, um, Small says, Brie, if you can't figure out the audio, you can send me the final version. I can adjust the audio if it so it isn't startling. I like the startling aspect of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Small says, oh, well, my mom wouldn't. She wouldn't lie, but she wouldn't volunteer me. I wouldn't volunteer you over either, but if no... Honestly, she just said she got it from Seth. She was working for him. And then it would have been up to the um then it would have been up to the state to search all of his ammo to see if any of that was ever in his place cuz remember they only searched a, a very small amount of samples for him. And again, can we really tie it to him? I know he's the supplier. He's not supposed to have live rounds, but can we really tie it to him when he had an armor on set and he wasn't on set? But then he would be in trouble for hiring an inexper inexperienced armorer. So probably they could have tied it to Seth Kenny. But I don't think her dad. Note to self, I wouldn't tell on my family either. 
Uh, Deacon Fatal says, Bree, listen, my mom taught prisoners for 20 years. I mess up. I'm going to prison. Yep. <laughs> See? <laughs> Small says, I snitched on my step siblings. My step siblings, no hesitation. LOL. I wouldn't snitch on my big brother who shares my surname and is our bio dad's twin, but I snitch on our other bio dad. On our bio dad. He's dead now, though, I think. Small. <laughs> That was a bit aggressive. And now if anyone watches this YouTube, anyone in your family, they know you're going to tell on them. Um, Deacon Fatal says, I can't stay with people. I feel I might have to snitch on because I will, right? People come to your house hoping that you're going to harbor them. No, absolutely not. I'm not going to jail for you, buddy. Um, Small says, see, Bree, you're putting a lot of trust in our legal system for more trust than I have when it comes to Black Americans. That is true too that is true i just don't think they could have tied it to the dad i think they were after seth kenny i think they were yeah hence why they searched his his um business kayla eloisa says runkle is pretty certain she will never be hired again i don't know i feel like there's some cheapskates in hollywood uh, Small says exactly, Bree. My people don't do illegal things. My nuclear family is a family of <laughs> right. <laughs> We're squares. We don't want to get in trouble. I get nervous when the police get behind me, and I've never done anything. Well, no, I won't say that I've never done anything wrong in my life. But you know, you at least don't get caught, right? But not illegal, illegal things. I'm talking about U turns when you're not supposed to do U turns. That's about as illegal as I get. Okay. <laughs> Um, Cheryl Reed says, my parents will drive me to the station while calling our attorney. <laughs> I don't know. They would have to come find me, but <laughs> they would have to come find me. Uh, De Deacon Vito says, have to head out. Alec is poo. <laughs> Love it. Um, and Small says, oh, they should have known that already. I'm not good at being fake. I am who I am. Say what I mean. <laughs> No, I get it. No, I definitely get it for sure. Okay, y'all. Well, I was going to talk about Lizzo today, but I really don't have much to say about her today. And we're already three hours in, so it's about time for this live stream to end. So um, thank you, everyone, for joining the live stream. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you, Kentari, for coming on live with me and chatting about some of our first quarter cases of 2024. It was a great time. I'm glad that we were able to pick out our, um, our like goal <laughs> animation and I will work on fixing it. So hopefully it's not as startling and I will see you all. Oh, and again, we have MB MBB is Kentari. Thank you for jumping onto the live stream with us. Um, the knitting skills and the commentary was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and again thank you to everyone that joined the live stream it was wonderful another weekend a live stream with so everyone cool. <laughs> and chatting with everyone oh she look how far she's got while so we so fast yeah what the oh heck? my gosh <laughs> I finished it. oh my gosh yeah i want to be you so badly i want to learn how to crochet but i'm like scared to start and i already throw myself into so much stuff that i need to just I always, my, my recommendation is to like, buy like, a knot kiss and have the silly tone. Uh, Mike is a little high right now. And uh, press the cheat jar. And first, use Actis Rose. Okay, that's better. Okay, go ahead, Kentari. She said to buy the hooks with the silicone on the end. Oh. Okay. The so Viranami. Ones because otherwise, uh, like if you buy the, the the cheap metal ones, the odds are that you're going to add a workout to another. But then, like a month, to leave the practice every day. But if you use the silicone ones and you stretch it beforehand, uh, uh, it doesn't really happen. It hasn't happened to me yet. And by the other turn, and just practice like small squares, like to get. Okay. Up to I just make stretches, and then you can start to practice. More and more, like, okay. I just always do it too tight, but I usually do. No, oh my gosh, Jeez. and so you said that you do commissioned work, yeah. right? I'm not making, 
the commission work um, like the ongoing never ending project is a black cat. This is for my anniversary. Wow. Wow. I have half of it. If you look up close, you can see that it's one and one. one. That's very interesting. I'm going to bring his so do you crochet them so together like, or do you sew them together? No, I crochet them together. Like you could you do, join them as you as you work it out together. And like that's half of my idea that I have. Like it's around here. The half the other half that I started, I took a break okay. from. Nice. You you can see it together. Yeah. You wouldn't work them. I am not that talented, y'all. I just get yeah, on the the, the internet and spew nonsense. <laughs> That's my hobby. <laughs> um no, I want to learn how to crochet and I also want to like sew my own clothes and stuff too. But one day now work as an interpreter. It's English to Spanish and outside of that it's knitting and translations and transcriptions. Oh, nice. Because it does have to be paid. Nice, nice. Well, again, thank you for joining us live. And again, thank you for everyone joining into the live stream um, with us. I'm going to have to make a little, um, what do you call it? An animation for our MVP for or our MVB for the live streams as well as we go on. And hopefully I don't make any more startling um <laughs> any more startling animation so again thank you and i will see y'all all on next tuesday's live stream bye bye see ya <laughs>